And coming up next, we're off to Phoenix, Oregon State, and Pittsburgh. The players say they see a lot of each other, both aggressive defenses, athletic quarterbacks, and that is the main weapon that Pittsburgh will try to unleash. Rod Rutherford going Larry Fitzgerald. Inside Bowl from Phoenix is coming up next. Welcome to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. The celebration of Bowl Week is boundless. From the beach to the bay. From the heart of Texas to the Sunshine State, the pageantry is unrivaled. The nation comes alive for Bowl Week. Tonight, Capital One Bowl Week continues its seasonal run in the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. A place where diamonds sparkle and champions are crowned. A place where two teams with the same designs travel in fully stocked with gifts ready to be unwrapped and showcased. Two programs reestablishing their national presence. The Inside Bowl from Bank One Ballpark, downtown Phoenix. And our matchup tonight, number 23, Pittsburgh, eight and four out of the Big East against Oregon State, also eight and four out of the Pac-10. It's their first meeting ever, and there should be plenty of fireworks as Walt Harris prepares his Panthers for the opening kick. Right now, back to Chris Fowler. All right, Dave, thank you. So two teams, I can't, it's the perpetual search for respect, I guess, Oregon State and Pittsburgh, and this game an important step toward that. I think when you talk about Pittsburgh, everyone talks about the fine freshman receiver in Larry Fitzgerald, but I think you really have to start concentrating on the other aspects of this offense. They've got a phenomenal running back, in my opinion, of, of Brandon Myrie with the football, it protects it very well, doesn't cough it up very much, but their quarterback, Rod Rutherford, I felt has done a very solid job this year. He started off a little shaky at the beginning of the year, but Walt Harris, the head coach of Pittsburgh, stayed with him. They worked with him throughout the season. He got much better. He threw for over 20 600 yards but I think the other key here that gets lost about Rod Rutherford he's rushed for over 400 yards he's smart with the football I think you're right talking about the running back position I think it's both sides where it's so important Steven Jackson for Oregon State obviously for this offense has to be able to run the football 1600 yards this year and you know Paul Rhodes the defensive coordinator Pittsburgh loves to get eight and nine guys in the box I think you'll see very early in this game if Oregon State can't run the football it could be a long day for the Beavers yeah Derek Anderson once he got to pack 10 play yeah. nine touchdowns touchdowns 11 picks he's struggled so that game is coming up Steven Jackson and company Pittsburgh and Oregon State take you to Phoenix as bowl week continues we'll have a lot more at halftime after this bowl week where history is made and legends live on number 11 Drew Bledsoe great throw by Drew Bledsoe Showdown time for Ron Dave. And here goes the big fella. Dave cuts back, and now he's going to take it. The Madison Express touchdown. Breeze lobs it for the end zone. Got him there. Touchdown, Isaac Joe. Drew Breeze stuck it right in there. This one is over. Tonight in Phoenix, we'll see the Big East leading receiver, just a true freshman. Larry Fitzgerald and on the Oregon State side we will see the leading rusher in the Pac-10 just a sophomore fifth in the country this year Steven Jackson. The Bob Bank One Ballpark expected to be full Better than 40,000 tonight for this first ever matchup in the inside bowl between number 23 Pittsburgh and Oregon State. We've shown you Larry Fitzgerald. Let's hear from him now. He is down below for a chat with Dave Ryan. What is it about your demeanor is able to handle a pressure so well? Um, you know, I, I look at it, uh, you know, in the NFL, I see a guy's career is a very short. So I just try to um, just try to come out here every day and, and try to get better because I know, you know, never know when your last play is going to be. So I just try to come out and you know, and uh, execute the offense and, and do what the coaches ask me to do and do the little things that, you know, other guys won't do because I know how short somebody's career could be. You may match up with Dennis Weathersby of Oregon State as their quarterback who said it's a test to his manhood if he can stop you. Is that a big challenge? Can you respond to that? 
Uh, no, I try not to look, make personal challenges out there on the football field. This is a team game. We got to come out here and win as a team. We got to run the ball. We got to be able to pass the ball. So, you know, you can't look at it one on one, all that stuff. You got it's not basketball. You got to play as a team game. You know, you got to come out here and and do the little things to win the game. It's not going to be Larry Fitzgerald and Dennis Weatherby. Thanks a lot for your time. Well, thank you. Here's Larry Fitzgerald. More than five catches a game. Dave Barnett, number one in the Big East Conference this year. And Dave, he's put on a great show all season long. We expect nothing different tonight. Welcome to Phoenix, Bank One Ballpark, usually the home of the Diamondbacks. It looks all right for football tonight. <laughs> Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick. Oregon State started well, 4-0. Then they hit a ditch. They lost three straight, and they got out of that ditch and made it here because they made a decision to give Steven Jackson the ball 25, 30, 35 times a game, whatever it took. They made it, or maybe Steven made it. Leaders surface when you're in trouble. Steven Jackson went to the coaches and said, give me the football. I don't care how many times you get. I will carry this team on my back. The result, 1,656 yards and 15 touchdowns, number one in the Pac-10 as a rusher. On the other side of the ball, an outstanding middle linebacker in Gerald Hayes. His defensive lineman must penetrate. This is Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator's plan tonight. They've got to penetrate. The linemen have got to take up more than one blocker so that Gerald Hayes can stay clean to tackle Steven Jackson, and that'll be a heck of a matchup. Uh, Mike, Pittsburgh is not real happy about how they came in here. They lost their last two, both by just seven, one to number one Miami in Miami, one to their rival, West Virginia. But all season long, the progression of Larry Fitzgerald has been incredible to watch. Uh, this is a man well beyond his 19 years. He plays so much more mature than that. Where do you see this kid go up for the ball? He just goes up and takes it away from those defenders. And I know we talked to Dave Ryan and said it's not about matchups. Well, sorry, Larry. It's going to be about a matchup tonight with you and Dennis Weathersby. He matches up decently in the height at 6-1. Weathersby loves to get on the line of scrimmage and loves to jam the receiver. So this will be an individual matchup that may have a big Big outcome on the game so Larry may not care much about it Dave but we're going to keep an eye on it. Dennis Erickson in his fourth year as the head coach at Oregon State has them in the third bowl in those four years they had been to three in their previous 43 years and Walt Harris has taken the Panthers back to the postseason his sixth year last year they won the tangerine they're in their fourth bowl in his six years and they're happy that he has stuck around that long he's a name that's been thrown into a lot of different coaching opening scenarios he says no truth to any of it happy where I am he's happy to have Larry Fitzgerald one of the best true freshmen you'll ever see ready to go back to work tonight as the Panthers and Beavers meet for the first time ever Oregon State has won the toss and deferred Tory Cox and Shantae Spencer are back deep for the Panthers and Ryan Seska is set to kick it off for Oregon State both eight and four for the Beavers a ninth win would equal their second best season ever two years ago of course they finished number four in the country eleven and one won the Fiesta Bowl over Notre Dame just down the road in Tempe a new field laid down over the baseball field here the roof is open. We're underway in the inside bowl. Cox from a yard deep. Bounces off the tackle. Turns it into a nice return and finally driven out at the 31 yard line. 32 on the return and junior Rod Rutherford from Pittsburgh a 31 percent passer his first two years. Walt Harris says something happened to him over the summer and he has been a completely different quarterback this year. Second team all Big East. The Coors Light offensive lineup for the Panthers. I think number 83 the tight end Chris Wilson is a potentially great player. Averages 22.5 yards per catch catching the football. Here's Wilson flexed out as a slot left and an empty backfield. They string five receivers across the line for Rutherford and he finds Wilson for a gain of about six yards Richard Siegler the middle linebacker with the first of probably many tackles for him tonight for the Panther offensive line they are nothing if not experienced and experienced together they've been together as a group for the better part of the last two years and they're led by Anderson a four year starter his 47th start tonight his 34th in a row up front. Swancut leads that group with 10 sacks. Manning for the second time this year named first team all Pac-10. 
Again, the empty backfield. And the short drop by Rutherford. Dangerous runner. And room up the middle for the first down to the 47-yard line. Nick Barnett and Eric Tuma, linebackers on either side of Siegler, with that tackle. And Barnett also first team all Pac-10. He led the conference this year 112 tackles in the regular season. And we talked about Weathers being the open, the cornerback, both these corners. He and Roberts love to play man. They'll get up on the line and jam. But interesting first two plays for Pittsburgh. All wide receivers, no back, no, no running backs because Oregon State will not put a nickel in. They'll keep those three linebackers in. Offset eye this time. Fitzgerald went in motion. And the first give to Brandon Myrie, the transfer from Alabama. Won the starting tailback job midseason. And Mitch Musin, the free safety, brings down Brandon Myrie. 110 yards per game in the last four. That included his big breakout, 161 in the game-winning touchdown at then undefeated number three, Virginia Tech. And we did that game, and we saw how that offensive line and Myrie just pounded Virginia Tech at that point, which was number one in the country, giving up just 40 yards on the ground. That's a team Pittsburgh rush for 275 yards in that one. Myrie alone behind Rutherford on second down and three. And Rutherford gets that one complete to Lamar Slade, who shoved out at the 36, another Panther first down. 10 yards, Slade number five receiver in the Big East, 45 catches and four for touchdowns this year. This is a really interesting start. Slade exploding off the ball against the man coverage, and he simply stops, and the ball is lofted out. He fakes a burst down the field and just comes back to the soft throw. Weathersby should be a little off balance having to deal with something unusual right off the bat. Overshadowed by Fitzgerald, Slade, a senior, brother of Chris Slade, longtime NFL linebacker out of Yorktown, Virginia. And that one dropped by Fitzgerald. It was close to being a backward pass, but it is incomplete, and there's a marker down. I do not believe my eyes, Mike. <laughs> I do not believe it. He can't be doing that. And it Penalty going to be against Pittsburgh. We just talked him up. He can't be dropping that. I don't think he'll <laughs> he'll do that much tonight. But very interesting start for Pittsburgh. We saw the five wide receiver set, four wide receiver set again. Do we hear the call? Illegal formation. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first time. Oregon State will not bring in a nickel. They will not bring in an extra defensive back as we see the drop by Fitzgerald they think their linebackers can cover just as good as any nickel back that could come in so that's why Pittsburgh started out with more wide receivers trying to take it early advantage of it. Big Ten officiating crew headed by David Whitbo backs him up five so first and 15 and the toss right from Irie looks for a cut back alley not much of one only a yard. Juan Edwards junior defensive tackle Making the stop for Oregon State the number 10 defense in the country and number nine against the rush just 92 yards per game they have surrendered on the ground this year. Yeah, this is a team guys that, that I don't think a lot of people know about we talked about Steven Jackson at the top you did though but this offensively and defensively these are two terrific teams. 10th and 11th in America defending. It's Gerald from the slot back in motion. And the blitz of Rutherford picked up nicely. Has time to fire one deep. Fitzgerald open. A diving pass for a touchdown. Are you kidding me? <laughs> there he is, folks. <laughs> That's the guy. That is a true freshman. What they did is they isolated him on the free safety, Mitch Mewson, who simply cannot run with him. Number five, Mewson in futile pursuit. Look at this, folks. Oh. That is a fantastic football catch. That's Jerry Rice reincarnated. I guess he made it for the drop, huh, guys? Wow. <laughs> what drop? Yeah, exactly. David Abdul, another talented true freshman, adds the extra point just like that. Seven to nothing, Pittsburgh. Walt Harris told us midseason and his offensive coordinator J.D. Brookhart agree they said they have never seen a receiver anywhere with hands with ball skills like Larry Fitzgerald 
That's what they were talking about. Larry Fitzgerald not only led the Big East in catches, but also with 11 touchdowns. Here's his 12. Well, it was a blitz that was picked up very well. You see the inside route by Slade, outside route by Fitzgerald just runs by Newson. I mean, what an what absolute mismatch there. Swancut gets a little bit of pressure on him at the end. But Barnett was a linebacker that blitzed. He was picked up. And Rutherford says, oh, yeah, let me throw it to my guy. <laughs> Rutherford just throws it as far as he can. Because <laughs> my guy can lay out and fly whether he runs particularly fast or not. And he does have good speed, not great speed. But there are very few people, folks, that can lay out, catch that football, and maintain it. Panther kickoff, David Abdul. Sending this one down to the two-yard line. And Brandon Cadenese returns after the 28. And then fumbled after he was down. Oregon State yep. will start from there. Oregon State in their 4-0 start featured terrific play from their sophomore quarterback, Derek Anderson. He averaged 300 yards passing, threw 15 touchdowns, 60%. Then problems. 0 for 3, he got beat up. And they relied heavily on Steven Jackson from that point on, as you see the Coors Light backs and receivers. And we've been talking about Larry Fitzgerald for Pittsburgh. How about James Newsom for Oregon State? Over a thousand yards receiving and receiving yards, 64 receptions, 11 touchdowns as well. And a typical Dennis Erickson one back set. Play action. First catch of the day, James Newsom, who should have a first down. 65th catch of the year in Oregon State record. Torrey Cox makes the stop. The offensive line features three sophomores who help the Beavers lead the Pac 10 in rushing at 160 yards per game. Brock, the leader of the group, out of Roseburg. The 300 pound center and Harriet first team all Big East defensive end with seven and a half sacks Crochunas Stevens and Guzik the rest of the Panther front four. Any Dennis Erickson offense going back as far as you can remember features the one back the three receivers and uh, incredible speed and he says this bill is his fastest team ever think that, about that that is scary if you have to compete against him because I saw some of his Miami teams and they could fly it was enough for the first so from the 38 they send Cole Clayson in motion and Jackson gets his first carry he will lose three yards Panthers are ready to jump on him led by Dan Stevens what Gerald Hayes and company and he has a fine company and binding and more an excellent linebacking crew what they need is the kind of penetration that we just saw in the previous play by the big guys up front Cox unanimous first team all Big East corner Ian Robinson seniors playing their final game in the Panther secondary fourth leading tackler in Pittsburgh history three times all Big East. And the Big East Defensive Player of the Year, a second team All-American. Plenty of time for Anderson to eat deep part again at midfield. Newsom, was he not down? He must not have been, and Newsom takes it all the way. Touchdown, 65 yards. How in the world did he stay up at midfield? Well, Torrey Cox and Brian Benneke ran into each other. And somehow, some way, well, well, like I said, we talked about the Fitzgerald on one side, Newsom is the man on the other. How did he come out of that one? Cox gets turned around. There's the collision. Wow. Oh, he stayed up. Great call by the officials. That was incredible that they got that right. Because it would have been a shame to deny him that touchdown after the balance and the athletic move he made. Kirk Ilanimi ties it. Well, where do we go from here? How do you top those two I mean, touchdowns? we got some football, some real football here. Go get all the chips and dip now and don't leave the couch. Cox and Bakey going to hit each other there. Oh, incredibly falls on his forearm and stays up. Does the elbow touch? Oh, yeah, the elbow's down, but the knee's wow. not down. Incredible job. You said incredible. Is that I mean, an incredible job? Or unbelievable an incredible? and incredible. <laughs> I put them together. How's that? That's how amazing it was. 
couple inches of daylight between oh. knee and grass. What that is is balance, but it's also sheer physical strength. When Coach Erickson talked about Newsom, he talked about the fact this guy is powerful. He's all man. He's got the same number of catches as our man Fitzgerald on the other side of the ball. He's got more yards, same number of touchdowns, and he's just matched him so just so to keep it even here in this game. And we'll keep an eye. Uh, Brian Be uh, Brian Beinecke went off limping when he and Tory Cox ran into one another. Keep an eye on that injury, but boy, oh boy. <laughs> that was incredible. You got yeah. it right. <laughs> well, there you have it. I'm it making up new words. Combination of unbelievable and incredible. Just I call like me that. call me Don King. I'll just make it all up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't think we're gonna have to do something with your hair before we can do that. Boy, you're right, Dave. Where do we go from here? Oh. James Newson breaking his own Oregon State record with his 12th touchdown of the year. Seska's kick coming down to Shante Spencer. And the return of 11 yards. Well, Fitzgerald threw the opening punch and Newsom countered. <laughs> they set the bar kind of high, haven't they? A flag down again. You know, Newsom listened to all the talk, read all the stories about. Yep. The incredible freshman, the uncredible freshman. <laughs> and knew he had a little something of his own to unveil. And not, wow. not many people east of Oregon have seen. Personal foul on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. Now here we, go. here we go. Oregon State has over 100 yards a game in penalties. This is a characteristic of Dennis Erickson's teams, and he will put up with a lot of aggressiveness. He doesn't like the. Um, cheap shots and that sort of thing but they will take their hits and they're going to be right on the edge as a defensive unit they've given up 45 first downs by penalty this season that is 11 more than any other team in the country gave up and squeezing through is Myrie for a couple well Friday Capital One Bowl week continues here on ESPN with a triple hitter Our day begins with college game day bowl special it's presented by Outback. It's at noon Eastern. Then at 1 Eastern, Southern Miss, Oklahoma State, Reliant Stadium, the new site for the 2002 Houston Bowl. 4.30 Eastern, Eli Manning at Ole Miss against Nebraska in the Mainstay Independence Bowl. 8 Eastern, Kansas State, Arizona State in the Pacific Light Holiday Bowl. Rutherford out of the gun with a fake to Myrie and a quarterback draw, which feels no one. Certainly didn't fool Eric Manning. Let's send it down below to the fourth member of our crew, Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, the feel-out process going on with both sides. Each team seemed a bit tentative emotionally. That's until the big play was made by Larry Fitzgerald. Keep in mind, only a thousand fans are here from Pittsburgh, so they didn't have a big emotional presence with their fans. He got the bench going when they saw the play in the replay. They exploded. James Newsom, the same thing for Oregon State. Many more Oregon State fans are here, guys. They've got the momentum of the crowd right now. And they hope their defense can shut down the third and eight. Rutherford again protected very well, but he underthrows Slade. And Slade was open. A couple of steps in front of Newsom. And we just watched the number one defense in America against third down conversions. Less than 25%, 24.7%. First downs allowed by Oregon State when the other team's trying to make a first down on third down. It, that is an amazing, uh, that is downright incredible as a statistic. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I'm never going to live it down. No. All right. Word of the night. Yep. Andy Lee led the Big East better than 43 yards per kick. Gets off a big one backing up down to the eight-yard line, Eric Williams. And Williams returns to the 26 and stuck there by Lewis Moore 54 yards on the first punt of the night by Lee Stephen Jackson number five in the country number one in the Pac-10 back to work in a 7-7 game in Phoenix the inside bowl bank one ballpark on a cool night maybe headed down to the 40s in Phoenix and a 7 7 start. 8 10 to play first quarter from the 26. Oregon State will have their second possession. First one ended rather spectacularly on a 65 yard balancing act. Catch and run by James Newsom. Eric Anderson's 25th 
touchdown pass of the season. And fires that one out complete for a short gain as Cox immediately takes down Newsom. And they've got a word or two. Dave Ryan, what was Torrey Cox's view on that touchdown? Well, Dave Torrey Cox, his senior leadership, really standing up and taking responsibility for not bringing down James Newson on that long Oregon State touchdown play a few moments ago. You just mentioned, Cox said, guys, it was my fault. I'm going to stand up and take responsibility, and it will not, I promise, will not happen again. We shall see. Well, he's usually good for his word. Unanimous first-team all-conference movement from tight end Jermaine Jackson on the right side of the line for Oregon State. That's Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yards, the down remains second. 7-7 seven, seven in the inside bowl in the home of the Diamondbacks. Bank one ballpark, downtown Phoenix, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Dave Ryan. And we have seen two of the best catches we've seen all year, just about any year. Diving layout, 40 yards by Fitzgerald. And then Newsom. Somehow manages not to hit the deck after being blasted at midfield. Gets up, runs the rest of the way for 65 yards to tie it. So Oregon State, after forcing an Andy Lee putt, has it for the second time, and that one's up for grabs and incomplete intended for Sean Kittner, who was covered well by Sean Robinson. It'll be third and 11. What a what a different way these teams are doing it. You saw Pittsburgh come out with five wide receivers and four wide receivers here. With Oregon State, it's two wide receivers, two tight ends, and the one back in Jackson always having that threat of the run using that play action. Anderson just a 47% passer, and that's after starting the first four games of 60% passing. When he got beat up midseason, his numbers really suffered. They blitz him, and they get him inside the 15. Claude Harriet now with eight and a half sacks to lead the Panthers on the year. This is a stunt. The defensive staff of Pittsburgh does not feel like that the offensive line has quite the quickness that they're accustomed to seeing, and so they're using stunts, and Harriet got up the middle and got clean and got the first good shot on Anderson. First punt of the night by Carl Toby is a good one and it backs Sean Robinson up inside his 30. And a flag down at the end of the return. Two markers down in fact. After a 55 yard punt by the junior Toby. Well for these two teams never playing before they sure talk to each other like they've been playing each other a lot. There are a lot of conversations out Isn't there. Isn't that part <laughs> of the bowl week thing though. Yes. Where you're in town long enough to have this this type of build up and well it, it is and I remember as we, we get the call I went to Pittsburgh's practice on Nern the return illegal block in the back above the waist on the returning team 10 yards from the end of the run and after the First practice out. Walt Harris was talking to his team. They were going to a function that night with Oregon State and said, all right, guys, let's let's be careful what we do out there and we meet these guys. Larry Fitzgerald has already done some magic with a diving touchdown catch to give Pittsburgh a lead. Oregon State has answered. Fitzgerald back to work next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Insight Bowl presented by Insight. Only Insight delivers the best combination of computer products, services, and price. Insight, whatever it takes. And in part by Jeep, the most respected, honored, and heroic 4x4s out there. Only in a Jeep 4x4. And by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold. Down. Easy. Panthers. On their third possession, we'll start from their 25-yard line. Just under the seven-minute mark, 7-7 seven, seven game in the first quarter. And the rushing yards have been tough to come by so far. For the tailback who transferred from Alabama, Brandon Myrie won the job from Raymond Kirkley midseason. And they said he was simply the most complete running back they had. He won the job because he outworked the others. He executed the reads the best. He was the most consistent. And he ended the year with 830 yards. 
And uh, big games, as we said, against Virginia Tech, 118 yards against Miami, closed with 121 against West Virginia. They lost those last two. Can't pin much on Myrie. Myrie bursting to the secondary and across the 40 with a first down and a gain of 15 yards. He finally has a crack, and Mewson and Terrell Roberts bring him down. Nick Barnett, number 42, a rare missed tackle, a fine linebacker for Oregon State. Excellent blocking here, maybe just a little bit of a grab right there. 77, Brian Anderson, but excellent burst by Myrie and really the first trace of a running game we've seen tonight because they are outnumbered. Both these defenses are outnumbering the running game. An extra tackler. Rutherford pointing out some of those potential tacklers before giving to Myrie again. And about nine yards across midfield of the 48. And again, Mewson, the free safety, called on for the tackle. Excellent job by the Pittsburgh offensive line getting on blocks. Oregon State defenders not getting off the blocks. Just staying on their man. They've got to extend with those hands and come off. Myrie into the second level before he's even touched. As Dave mentioned, we weren't sure where this running game was going to go with Pittsburgh. It, it took off at times. Gain of 15 followed by a gain of nine. Myrie again runs into his line and then backs up. Tries that same hole again. Still going down to the 39. If at first you don't succeed, stay after it and you'll get your first down. And another gain of nine. One of the things that you can't teach a running back, and in fact you wouldn't want to, is a spin move. It's something that happens instinctively. Excellent blocking again, Myrie. Good balance. Looking for a spot. Now watch when the tackle attempt occurs. Boom, there goes the spin. And he's off that tackler and up the, up the field for another four yards. It's a natural thing. He also keeps the ball secured, which is very important if you're going to do that spin. Rutherford going for Fitzgerald again. Open again. Batted away at the goal line by Weathersby. So Fitzgerald beat Newson. Weathersby, for this play at least, is his equal. There's matchup number one on the deep ball to Fitzgerald with Weathersby. Again, he's better on the line, jamming. You see Fitzgerald got by him. A little more on the pass. He's got to slow up for it. Good job of jumping at the same time. Maybe got a little, a little grab of the shirt. Hey, you know what? You don't get called. That's a fine move. No problem with that at all. If you can get away with it. But what I like is the way he timed his jump with Fitzgerald. That's what Larry has done so well. Is out jumped his opponents. Weathersby jumped right with him. First time tonight, those two have been matched one on one. Out of the gun. And up to the 35 goes Myrie. From there, third and six. I'll tell you. <laughs> Oregon State is very fortunate that Dwan Edwards just made that tackle. It would have been a touch. You take a look at the two plays that brought the score where it was. A great layout by Larry Fitzgerald. And then Newsom. Watch him keep his balance here. And he never touches the ground. And you can see why Torrey Cox took responsibility because yep. he ducked his head. All he had to do is keep his head up and he would have come down with the tackle. They run Fitzgerald in motion. And Rutherford running out of time. And they'll rule him in the grasp and down to midfield. As Nick Barnett, the leading tackler in the Pac-10, comes in for his sixth sack. You can see how Barnett runs extremely well. He's also the hardest working football player on this team. He'll be coming from his linebacker spot. Now here's where it gets interesting. What does the rule say? He's driving Rutherford backward. As he drives him backward, the whistle blows. So even though Rutherford appeared to escape, the play was over. There's no such thing as in the grasp in college football. If your forward progress is stopped long enough in the judgment of the official, then the play is over. Oregon State calls time, 328, first quarter, 7-7. Capital One Bowl week from Phoenix as Pittsburgh and Oregon State continue the first quarter tied at seven. They ruled Rutherford's progress down at the 45, and Andy Lee pops this one. 
Down to the 24, where it's fair caught by Eric Williams. Just 20 yards on this one. I guess he wanted to hang it up in the air. <laughs> Not like that. No. Eric Anderson, sophomore from Scapoose, Oregon, now the all-time Beaver single-season passing leader with that 79-yard start he has tonight. Came in 147 total yards from Jonathan Smith's Oregon State single-season record. Smith now a graduate assistant on Dennis Erickson's staff. So a little bit of a gift after the short punt, and Jackson off tackle. And a gain of nine. Friday night, the NBA season continues on ESPN2. 7.30 Eastern, the pregame NBA scoreboard, and then at 8 Eastern, Ray Allen and the Milwaukee Bucks in East Rutherford. They'll take on Jason Kidd and defending the Eastern Conference champion, New Jersey Nets, who took apart the Boston Celtics yesterday by 36, and it wasn't that close. I'll tell you what. Incredible what's going on in the NBA and especially out there in LA with the Lakers. <laughs> Awful start there in. Lost at home last night to Sacramento. Second down and one carry by Jackson. And runs right into Lewis Moore, but should have the first down by about a foot or so. This is where I think Oregon State is going to need to try and establish some of the running game and try and establish Steven Jackson as a threat. I know we put up the numbers. Of Derek Anderson, but he's only completed right at 47% of his passes this year overall. So if the game is relying on his arm, it could be a struggle for Oregon State. They need to get this man going so that they can work the play action off of him. Jackson out of Las Vegas. Erickson says that's an under recruited area, and he thought Jackson was a little bit under recruited, although he was player of the year in Nevada. And they feature him on this series, his third straight carry out to the 43. Jackson as just a sophomore, fifth in the country. Everybody chased Larry Johnson. And then you had Michael Turner, the least known. Chris Brown, Willis McGahee, big names. And Steven Jackson will get bigger. I mean, with two more years available yep. to him in the program, no telling where he'll end up. That's not a happy thought for linebackers, <laughs> but you can see right now, you can see his acceleration. A throw on second and short, and it's caught by Kenny Farley, the slot receiver with his first grab of the night to the 48 of the Panthers. A little more on Steven Jackson from Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, there are a lot of similarities with Steven Jackson and a certain running back with the Miami Dolphins who's tearing up the NFL this year, Ricky Williams. Steven Jackson has always looked up to Ricky, whereas the same number 34 has a very similar haircut, and he uses the face shield as well, just like Ricky. At this rate, he may be a number one NFL draft pick as well down the road. Well, I'd you say could he's find, got a shot at that. <laughs> you could find worse uh, role models. Yeah, as long as yeah. when he starts doing the interviews, he takes the helmet off. Yeah, well, Ricky does that. <laughs> yeah, I know he does. Back to Jackson. And a couple of hard fought yards. He estimates that the old fashioned stiff arm weapon has given him about 600 of his 1,656 yards coming in. Now, 38 yards. To become number five on the all time Pac 10 single season list. Chasing down OJ Simpson. But we haven't seen it yet, but when he unveils it, you'll know it because it is the bane, especially of defensive backs who have to try and deal with that thing. It's no fun seeing film the next day if you've got stiff arm to the ground. It's just like that left jab. And Paul Rhodes, defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, says there is really no way to deal with it once he gets it up. Hanging this one deep and too deep by a couple of yards for Newsom, who had blown past Torrey Cox. Didn't hang it high enough. Third and seven. This guy has got a wonderful arm. He really, in his delivery, reminds me of Byron Leftwich, the great Marshall quarterback. Just a little more top on it. He's saying, come on, Derek, just hang it up. Just give me a little more, maybe a step or two to run under that thing. Derek's got the adrenaline going and he's a little pumped right now but he'll bring those under control as the game progresses and we're going to see a very interesting contest of two well oiled offenses here. Promising drive but now they need seven on third down and they come with a safety blitz Anderson in time. 
Complete. Sean Kittner with the catch. And at the 32, an Oregon State first down. A gain of 14. Just can't do it. Just can't play off that much. Torrey Cox playing off way too much. Tez Morris gets some pressure on Anderson. He stays in there, throws it. He knows it's coming. He knows the pressure's coming right up in the face. Well, the reason he played off is because of the free safety blitz. Tez Morris came from a depth of 11 yards, got the late hit. But Torrey Cox wasn't about to get up there and let Newsom run by him again. That's why he's playing off. Well, first and ten, bottom line. Back to the running game, Jackson. Panthers shadow him pretty well now, and no game. That's Crochunas joined by Gerald Hayes. <laughs> Hayes is going to be a man you're going to see playing on Sundays as well. A big, tough middle linebacker. He can fill, he can run sideline to sideline, he can take on blocks. Good little rip underneath. Getting by Sanchez, getting himself to the ball. Again, good size to play the middle in the NFL. Loss of a yard and stumbling. Out of the gates, Anderson will lose a few more, and they'll have to convert another third and now you, long. But it'll be the first play of the second quarter. Excuse me, Dave. You wonder how in the world can a thing like that happen? That's a screw up between Matt Block, the center, and the quarterback Anderson. It's a footwork thing. Anderson's got to get his right foot out of the way as Block needs to step back to pass protect. The quarterback's right foot should automatically come back. We've seen more of that this year, and I think the reason is. Because there's so many gun snaps that these teams don't work as much on the center quarterback exchange in the normal fashion. So centers and quarterbacks footwork is not quite as well coordinated as it normally would have been in the past. Larry Fitzgerald made one catch. It was for 40 yards full layout to get Pittsburgh on the board. Oregon State then answered on a 65 yard catch and run by James Newsom. A spectacular first quarter exchange and we'll head to the second. Tied at seven. Part of the crowd of around 6,000 or so who have come down from Corvallis. Oregon State fans looking at a 7 7 first quarter tie. Thanks to Larry Fitzgerald and James Newsom. We begin the second quarter with the third and long, 15 to be exact, facing the Beaver offense. Trying not to get bogged down here now that they've reached Panther territory. Kittner, who converted the last third down, wide left. And Anderson looking his way. A heave intended for Farley incomplete. If he had continued to look Kittner's way, he broke on a post wide open at the goal line. But Anderson turned his attention elsewhere. Uh, he had his attention there the whole way, too, and that's a problem for Anderson. Again, completing just 47% of his passes. He locked on to Farley in that route. Dave, you're absolutely right. He looks down the middle of the field. They're winning this ball game. Instead, they're punting. Carl Toby out. Sean Robinson deep. Toby trying to do what Lee did last time, hang about a 20 yarder up, and hammers it well beyond the end line. 36, he'll net 16. RESPN game track. We'll never get tired of looking at that. The true freshman from Minneapolis hit a home run, and then Newsom answered. Now the elbow was down. Yep, Bill. What does the rule book say I about was Bill? Wrong. Our boss Mo Davenport called when any part of the runner's body, except his hand or foot, touches the ground, or when the runner is tackled or otherwise falls and loses possession of the ball, he is down. So I was wrong. The boss is right. Should have been down at midfield. Should still be 7 nothing Pittsburgh as it turns out. We'll show you again a here clear again. angle here. Here it is again. And it's it's something that obviously the officials didn't understand the rule. I would have called it the same way the officials. Have he is down right there. When that elbow touches the ground anything other than the foot and the hand. And in 48 years of football you would think I would have learned that. That's all right, Bill. You got another 48 still to go. I hope so. Second down and seven. And three wides. Myrie with the toss to the short side. Nice wiggle 
at about the 23 and that gets him about four extra yards. Pittsburgh has a major loss to deal with and that is the loss of their athletic director Steve Peterson to the University of Nebraska. Steve Peterson is with Dave Ryan. All right, Dave, we're quite ready. Now we are, Steve. How difficult has it been over the past couple days for you? I know you're heading off to Nebraska pretty soon, but still this is a big game for the Pittsburgh program. What are the emotions like for you right now? Well, you know, it's always hard when you come back and you see the kids and, and our staff. We have such a great staff, at, but this is the way I want to do it. Spend some time with them. This has been a great three days of, of being with them and getting a chance to see each one of them. We were together on Christmas. You know, I guess if, if you're going to leave, you couldn't leave with a better scenario than this. An amazing turnaround of the program when you got to Pittsburgh six years ago, Steve. The Peterson Event Center, the brand new Heinz Field, practice facilities for basketball and football. Did you think six years ago you could build the dream so quickly? Well, I think there were times where I was the only one that believed that, and uh, maybe they thought I was a little crazy, but we kept saying if we work hard and we, we had a good plan and we kept going forward with the plan, and fortunately, more and more people begin to believe and we've got tremendous coaches we got a great staff and they all pitched in and and, uh, and our, our, our principles have been commitment teamwork and pride and we have been teamwork people all the way along that's that's what's great about this organization is everybody does it together everybody believes in each other and uh, and we've said all along nobody's more or less important than anybody else we got to have everybody on the same team to get it done thanks for your time Steve great native of North Platte Nebraska and a Husker alum going back home Dave and he will be missed and boy did he ever reshape the landscape of University of Pittsburgh athletics defensive holding call on that scrambled by Rutherford and so they'll move up to the 44 with a first down moved into Heinz Field moved into the new basketball arena and they've got a top five level basketball program we'll see where football ends up if they win they'll be somewhere in the top 25. Rutherford again protected extremely well hangs that one up and the receiver slips down as Dennis Weathersby also loses his footing Marcus Furman can't take advantage of it. yeah when, when your feet tangle like that they're not going to call it nor should they it was a slip here by the receiver see Weathersby again a nice job that's his forte right at the line of scrimmage just slipping no call easy no call there. I want to keep going on, uh, and that with the AD leaving, but what Walt Harris has started, guys. Remember his last year before being the head coach, he was an assistant at Ohio State that put a 72 to nothing whooping on Pittsburgh in '96. Walt Harris takes over the program now. Six years later, they're 24 points away from being undefeated this year. One play in each of their four losses. Berman makes this catch, and then immediately brought down by Weathersby. Four losses by an average of six points a game. The biggest eight points against the Notre Dame team. They outgained by a 400 to about 185 yard margin. They they rolled up huge statistical advantages on Miami. Twice as many first downs, about twice the time of possession. They were throwing into the end zone for a tie at the end of that game. And then gave up a late big play and lost the backyard ball to West Virginia. Extra point misses cost them the Texas A&M game. So they are just a hair away from a spectacular season. Mewson a hair away probably from a 55 yard touchdown interception return. And Mewson's been laying back in the middle. And what what's Oregon State's doing on defense is they're lining up in a zero coverage at times meaning no free safety and they're just going man to man and they're blitzing then they're leaving Mewson in the middle of the field and they're playing man free meaning there's a free safety with five under man and the quarterback tends to forget about that guy and he almost plucked it and went the distance there he's had one big one bad putt this one is huge and Eric Williams backs up into his end zone. Boy, does he avoid absolute disaster. You're not supposed to back up inside your 10. He was 12 yards beyond there. A 52-yard punt by Lee. He brings it back 10. Wow. Still 7-7. Kurt Schilling wouldn't approve. But it's a nice enough night, a little on the cool side, to have the roof open at the Bob. What happens here? Eric Williams, what's he thinking, Bill? Well, you put a veteran guy like Eric Williams at the 10-yard line, and you say, don't back up no matter what. Well, you don't practice this 
you go for 40 days or so without playing a football game because you're in a bowl and Eric's standing there and he backs up. He thinks he's backed up two yards. He's not supposed to back up at all and he backs up 12. So bad field position for Oregon State. Anderson pump fake going deep. Newsom overthrown and Mike again not enough air under it. Got to lay that ball up a little more. No doubt about it. Put some air in it. But let's go back and see what happened on the sidelines and Williams goes there. Coach is a little discussion. Let's see if your feet are on the 10 and you back up. Don't catch the ball. Is that what they're saying Bill. They say don't back up. Yeah. Period. Let the ball hit if it's the eight yard line if it's the six because the odds are it's going to go into the end zone for the touchback. Touchback that almost turned into a safety. Cost him 10 yards. On second and 10. Right up the middle, Steven Jackson. Close to breaking that one. He almost <laughs> popped that thing. Because of the blitz tendencies and because they're not playing with a free safety part of the time, both these defenses are playing almost identically in terms of scheme. If one of these backs can pop it through untouched at the line of scrimmage, he's going to run a long way. 7 7 game in Phoenix. Moved this game a few years ago from Tucson. Run fairly well. They have about 41,900 seats available for this football alignment. About 6,000 less than for baseball. And they announced that none were available by kickoff. On third and five, they beat the blitz and a nice over the shoulder toss to the tight end, Tim Ewis, who then loses it. Scramble at the 42. I think he might have got it back. Possibly what a fantastic throw by Anderson. Let's see that not guarantee you there's some fighting going on under there. This is 42 yards if it stands. And it does. He did. He got, I think he got it back. He did. What a great job by first by the throw. What a touch pop. You talk about getting a little airy. A little nice little pop right over the top. To Ewis. Excellent throw. Good recovery. By Humphreys, he comes in there with the arm and, and causes the fumble, but Ewis ends up with it again. The problem is the ball is yep. out there loose. He's not securing it well. It's popped out, and you will not see a more fortuitous fall in this entire game than that when he fell right on the football. Tim Ewis, a very lucky young man. 42 yards to the 42. Another play fake. Anderson. Deep ball batted up in the air. And then defended by Kittner, the intended receiver, just to make sure nobody in a white jersey got it. Well, here again you see here again you see Anderson locking on, going back to Kittner. He was in double coverage, but he would Anderson was throwing it there anyway, almost tips it right to him. So what a wow. That would have been something if he pulled that thing in. I almost pulled that thing in. I'll tell you, these two quarterbacks are so exciting. They're so much fun to watch. For somewhat different reasons, this was a little bit errant throw, but Anderson's got tremendous potential. Kittner just keeping that away from Gary Ursler. To the ground, Jackson hit by Brian Guzik at the line and falls forward for a couple. Another third and long coming. Capital One Bowl Week continuing tomorrow. ESPN has a triple header beginning with College Game Day's Bowl Special presented by Outback at Noon Eastern. One o'clock, Southern Miss Oklahoma State from Reliance Stadium and the Houston Bowl at 4.30 Eastern. Eli Manning at Ole Miss and Nebraska at the 27th Mainstay Independence Bowl from Shreveport. Finishing up out west in San Diego, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl with number six Kansas State against Arizona State. Third and eight blitz. Anderson a strike over the middle and a first down to the 30 Cole Clayson with his first catch and it's good for 10 yards. Same defense man coverage this time with no free safety because they're bringing the blitz Corey Humphreys in man coverage on Cole Clayson Clayson pops inside a perfect throw. Nice job by Anderson good execution and concentration by Clayson for the first down and one missed tackle folks I'll repeat. And these things are touchdowns. This drive that began at their own 10 on the punt fielded two yards deep in the end zone has now reached the Panther 30. Jackson hit behind the line by Vince Crochunas. 
Well, you talked before the game, Bill, and talked about how they need to try and free up Hayes with these D tackles and nose tackles making penetration. This time the tight end, Tim Ewis, gets off on Hayes. Gets a nice little piece of cloth as well, but you know what? The guys up front did the job that time. Fortuis makes nice penetration and makes the play behind the line. As Hayes tries to make it over there, he'll have plenty more than four tackles tonight, I guarantee you that. Second down and 11, Jackson again. Same result. Swarmed by Panthers. Guzik first, then Lewis Moore. Here's what the defenses are saying to the offenses. You are not going to run the football. We're going to blitz and blitz and stunt and slant, and we're going to get in the gaps, and we're going to keep you from getting it to those big backs and grinding us into fine powder. You want to take a chance throwing it? Take your chances. We're going to take our chances. That's what the defenses are doing, and they're a little bit of a gamble, but it's fun to watch. Four of the offensive linemen for Oregon State over 300 pounds, including Kuykendall at 324 and Sanchez at 340. So you're right, Bill. This D line is doing some nice stunting and hitting the gaps. That was quicken. As a result, Jackson has only 22 yards on his first 10 carries. Anderson hit and incomplete. The arm going forward. Incomplete pass. Lewis Moore coming on a blitz. And he really he he took a hit from both sides and. Well, he thinking, all right, he's getting up and running off the field. That's that's a good sign because he took it on the blind side and the front side. Thomas Smith and Lewis Moore. Oh boy, they just bent him. Mm. Oh, you see the knee bent back, but he got up and ran off the field. That's a good, good sign. Well, they're out to try a 49-yard field goal, and Kirk. Illinimi has made 13 straight, a school record for a single season. He has this one long enough and make it 14 straight. And he's made a 50-yarder before, so it's no big deal to him. Well, he's a walk-on. They finally have found a scholarship for him, but he's got to wait till next year. 14 out of 15 on the season. And he's given the Beavers their first lead in the inside bowl. Well, just about 10 miles from here, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl will take place at Sun Devil Stadium on the Arizona State campus. January 3rd, Miami, Ohio State. Corey Cox. And the return to the 25. But before the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, the Bowl Championship Series kicks off on ABC with the historic matchup between Big 12 champ Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl for the first time ever against Pac-10 champ Washington State. The Rose Bowl presented by PlayStation 2, 430 Eastern, 130 Pacific on ABC Sports Championship TV. If you can't get to a TV, ESPN Radio, of course, has nationwide coverage. 10-7, Pittsburgh trailing for the first time midway in the second quarter. Rod Rutherford, a play fake, and the second catch by Fitzgerald. Out to the 32-yard line, a gain of six, tackled by Nick Bardet and Dennis Weathersby. That's what needs to happen with this passing offense. It's got to be more on rhythm. You've seen when Pittsburgh has struggled, it's Rutherford has held on to the ball. It's been excellent coverage by Oregon State who led the Pac-10, giving up only 200 yards a game through the air, led by that man as well, Weathersby, who's it's a career record, 61 passes defense for the Beavers. They just want to get you to third down. They figure they got you at that point. Second and four. And Myrie, with the give out of the shotgun, spins ahead to the 42. And a gain of 10 yards from Myrie at this point, Winning the matchup with Stephen Jackson rather handily. That free safety sitting back there, Mitch Musen, has a job to do. When that back pops it, his job is to get him on the ground one way or another. And it wasn't a pretty tackle, but he got the job done. <laughs> That's no fun when you're back there. Oh, you see no. that back pop through? The big tank comes <laughs> through now. But the guys up front are getting a hand on him, getting slowing him up a little, helping out just enough. Myrie outrushing Jackson 68 to 22. Rutherford again well protected. That's incomplete. Marcus Furman didn't have it. Incomplete pass. Let's send it down to Dave Ryan. All right, 
Matt Dave, special guest Tim Brown, the CEO of Inside Enterprises with us. The big question we all have with our ESPN crew, Tim, why the change? Inside.com Bowl the first five years, Insight Bowl this year. How come? We're more than just a great website. We're 5,000 people around the world solving business customers' problems. Excellent answer. And you've got quite a few of your employees here as well, some 3,000 watching the game tonight. Absolutely. The entire bleacher section across the field are all inside employees and their families. Dave, locally based company, Tempe, is a few miles away. Second down and 10 with four wides. And Rutherford again stepping up to keep. Out to the 48. Interesting to hear Walt Harris say that in some ways he's not as good a runner as he was when he was a poorer passer. When he was a 31% passer, he was a better running threat. I think they'll take the pass, and wouldn't you think, Bill? Well, they like the combination. I mean, he can he can still run well. He's he was a great runner before because he thought about running. Now he thinks about where he's going to throw, and the run is an afterthought, and that's what you want in an outstanding quarterback. And he is certainly that. Here's a third down. Beavers in the last two games gave up only three of 26. Third down conversions. Slade makes the catch inbounds. Pretty pass. And an easy catch as it turned out as Rutherford well, drops it right over his shoulder in front of Calvin Carlisle in a gain of 17. Well, called it incomplete. Now the referees had a discussion. And he's saying he had a foot out of bounds. Wow, that was a Dennis Erickson called. <laughs> Dennis walked down there and talked to the official. Is that right? Right foot. It's hard to tell. An official right there. I mean, he is looking right at it. He is the one who eventually overruled the other official as they talked. He said, nope, his foot was on the out of bounds line. Now, that's the strangest call I've seen in a long time. It'd be a lot more convincing if he had yeah. said it immediately. Yes. Yeah. Either it is or it isn't. So, Andy Lee. It's off this one, which is a little easier for Williams to deal with because he didn't oh. have to back up inside the 10. Here comes the flag, the halo rule. And that's going to be a 10 yard penalty. Tory Cox got down there. This is another close call because it looked to me like Cox had it timed extremely well. And that's the goal. When you're one of those gunners, when you're one of those guys coming down on the outside, as Cox is, you want to be a little. Beyond ten, uh, two yards. Interference with the opportunity, two yard goal. About ten yards from the end of the run. And in First the uh, judgment of the officials, he was obviously just inside the two yards. Let's take a look here. We have the uh, benefit of replay. Oh, boy. Well, that's, that's awfully close. Yes, it is. But they'll move it out of the 24. And from that point, Oregon State with a 10 7 lead, 5.43 to go in the first half of the Inside Bowl from Bank One Ballpark. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Insight Bowl, presented by Insight. Only Insight delivers the best combination of computer products, services, and price. Insight, whatever it takes. And in part by Chrysler. Drive equals love. And back inside the Bob, Dave Barnett, Mike Golick, Bill Curry, Dave Ryan. 10 7, and Oregon State takes it from their 24 with 5.43 to go in the first half. Flags and whistles before Stephen Jackson. A little bit of movement. Make it first and 15. Prior to staff, defense in the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Five yard penalty, second down. And we get close to halftime, at which time we'll have the Dodge halftime report and look at what Boston College did to Toledo, the Motor City Bowl. A preview of Arizona State, Kansas State, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, as well as Ole Miss, Nebraska, the Main State Independence Bowl. Like I said, first and five. five. You said um, something like that. Yeah. This time the fake to Jackson and the deep ball. He overthrows Newsom again. That's three times. That is three times that Derek Anderson 
has lacked air underneath to get James Newsom a chance to run yeah. under that. So it's 10-7. <laughs> it could be a lot worse than 10-7. Well, it could, but here's what Pittsburgh is saying to Oregon State. You're not going to beat us right. running the ball. We're going to make Anderson beat us with his arm, and right now we don't think he can do it. And Newsom's going back saying, please, just take a little off. I think I can get this guy. That's exactly right. He's throwing it up on the other side of the ball. Rutherford in the pocket either needs to make that quick throw or take off and run because he can run pretty effectively. Second down and five. Back to Jackson. And bottled up again. That's actually one of his better runs. And he'll be close to the first down. Yeah, he made three yards. <laughs> and he's used to ripping people. Now, you got to understand this guy is accustomed to averaging five and a half yards per carry. And Oregon State has said, we're going to run him with the football. We don't care if there are nine of them up there in the box. Well, this guy's close to 230 pounds, and Pittsburgh does not want him running north and south. But you see the comparison between the two, Myrie. Out rushing Jackson at this point. Jackson with almost exactly twice as many yards as Myrie coming into the night. Did have it up for the first. And back into a crowd. It has not been much fun this first half for Steven Jackson. Well, what they're making him do is they're making him dance. And you said it earlier, Bill, with that D line and linebackers, either the run blitz or the stunts up front with the line hitting the gaps on that big Oregon State offensive line. You want to make Jackson dance east and west before he could pick up a head of steam and use that stiff arm which he talked about which he, we have not seen tonight. Pittsburgh is doing an excellent job bottling him up. He wants to be an architect not a dancer. He also wants to run through some holes and he's not getting much help from his friends up front tonight. Two yards there. Trying to the short side of the field. Undercut before he can get the stiff arm out by Tory Cox. Back down to Dave Ryan. Steve Jackson carries around a notebook all the time and actually jots down certain notes, uh, little ideas he might have for that career in architecture. He'd like to build someday a five story house. Not sure how many bedrooms. He wants a jacuzzi, a basketball court, a movie theater as well. Hey, if he keeps playing this way, NFL career, I think that's all possible. I'm still drawing stick figures. <laughs> Is that what those are? Well, supposed to be. That's, that's very impressive. That's a casino pit boss. Mom used to be a 21 dealer. Grab it midfield, Newsom, and hang it on for dear life, Sean Robinson. I'll tell you, <laughs> Newsom is a load now. He must have gone back to the coaches and said, forget about those deep balls. Derek's not throwing them very well. Just let me have it anywhere in front of these guys. I'll rip away from them. Nice route, good timing. Look at the throw, still just a shade high, but look how strong Newsom is. Sean Robinson literally hanging on for dear life. Coach said you just can't even try to bump him. It's not even worth the effort. No one's been able to all year. Well, if you can bring him down by themselves. Robinson just barely managed to. And now Jackson knocked backwards again. He'll lose two. Gerald Hayes getting the better of this matchup so far. Well, I'll tell you what, again, a great load. He can either take on that block or slip through if he's protected. See, so Reed diagnosed and getting around the block. Ewis again trying to get the hold. This time can't do it. Hayes gets his shoulders around him and squared to the line of scrimmage. That is key. Excellent job of body movement. With Ewis, the tight end having the angle on. Ewis, Ewis is trying to yep. grab him and drag him down. Trying to hold him, getting hold him. Watson split out wide left. Anderson goes the other way and off the hands of Kenny Farley, the second leading receiver for the Beavers. It'll be third and 12. Farley's another big, strong looking guy. All these guys are yeah. just, not all of them, but virtually all of them. Sean Kittner, number 10. Newsom, the big old 6'1, 6'2, 6'3 guys, over 200 pounds. And these defensive backs are physically outmanned when they have to try to tackle them. He's just getting the play and now coming in the huddle. He's going to have to hurry. This is this is one of these situations you never really like. You get to the line and you kind of get rushed. Jackson again comes out wide left. One on one with Cox. 
Oh, I bound to one, and Anderson didn't see yeah. it, and did he get timeout called in time? I really don't think he did, but they're going to yeah. give it to him. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to run, out, yeah, if you're going to run out that late to the huddle, you've got to be aware of that clock counting down. Only one more timeout for Dennis Erickson. 2:34 left in the half. Crowd here at the Bob. Somewhere around 42,000. We also want to welcome the men and women serving proudly in the 235th Base Support Battalion in Ansbach, Germany. Watching the Inside Bowl on AFN, the American Forces Network. Happy holidays from all of us at ESPN. Hope you had a good one. Hope you're enjoying this one. 10 7 Oregon State. They have a third and 12. And they have a blitz on Anderson. Fires it off the hands of Farley. And then blasted for good measure by Tez Morris. Anderson got some of the same treatment from Brian <laughs> Beinecke. Well, when it's third and 11, you hang back, you let him throw the ball, and then you deliver a smack that sounds a little something like this. Oh, boy. And that's what that free safety's yep. back there for in pass to break that up. Toby. Sends this one down to the 16. Fair caught there by Robinson. And let's hear from Chris Fowler. What you got in store for us at the half? Well, Dave, a strong opening statement by the Big East. A Motor City mashing by Boston College. We'll have some highlights of that. Tell you whether or not Arizona State has a good chance against K-State in the Holiday Bowl tomorrow. And the Buckeyes joining you guys in the Phoenix area in preparation, of course, for the Tazuda's Fiesta. Let's come up with the Dodge Halftime Report. And it was a nice sunny day today, but it's been uh, oh. kind of yucky, cloudy, rainy, very cold. I got here Sunday, went to Pittsburgh practice Monday. It was 43 and raining. <laughs> it was brutal. Guys said they could have stayed in Pittsburgh for that. Well, there I said, why did I bring my shorts and shades? Rutherford, the out that they ruled out of bounds last series, they rule inbounds to Lamar Slade this time. Tough throw. Yards. Tough throw to make. And a beautiful throw by Rutherford. He showed presence in the pocket. And this is why they don't want, want him running out of there. He had to stand. There was a foot down prior. Slade got a foot down before that one that you saw step on the line. So that was a, a really well-executed throw and catch. Again against man coverage. Beautiful night tonight. Well, they're dropping down in the 40s, though. Rutherford. Gets it to Myrie on the screen, and Brandon Myrie's legs do the rest. Well, for a nice downfield block by Lamar Slade, finally caught by Musin, a gain of 25. But what started it was Dan LaCarte out there holding on to his block on Eric Tuma. This is what gets the play going. A little shot put shot out there at first for Rutherford. LaCarte holds the block to spring Myrie. Just like that, they've reached the Beaver 41. Rutherford overthrows a leaping Marcus Furman. Roosevelt Bynes quit the team before the bowl uh, practices began. He was their third leading receiver, gone, and so Marcus Furman has been elevated and getting a lot more playing time than he was used to during the season. Yeah. Rutherford's been watching Anderson too right now. He's got his eyeball working. <laughs> he threw that one off the backstop, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that one just got away. Toward home plate, too. That's Fitzgerald in motion. Rutherford looks his way, has him, and wrapped up immediately by Terrell Roberts. Senior second team all Pac-10 corner. And who was it that lost that shoe? That was uh, Slade. So he's got time uh, for a little bit of a repair. Timeout with a minute. 42 to go. 10-7, but Pittsburgh driving. Some people oh. just should not try this. Go ahead. Get back up here in the box. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's not me. Wow. I move like that, I'll be winded. <laughs> I, th I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> For a guy with a mustache. <laughs> what does the mustache have to do with I, 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 not, I didn't even want to ask, Dave. I just stayed away from Third it. Third and six. For the Panthers, a minute 50 and a half. Rutherford 
Gets away from the first hit, but not the second. Still fights to get the ball off and did, and it's incomplete. Not intentional grounding because it was near my read. Yeah, it was also a very bad risk. There were a lot of black shirts over there around Myrie, and even though he came out of it smelling like a rose, he could have um, had a very different kind of scent after this. You need to yeah. just take it, take your lumps here. Don't throw that ball up in the air. He had no idea what he was doing with it, and it could have gone the other way. Well, it would, would be like about a 55-yard field goal, 54-yard field goal. Abdul's longest is 47, so they're not going to risk anything here. Lee's going to kick this time to Terrell Roberts and not Eric Williams, who backed up two yards into the end zone to field one early. Roberts does the right thing. He runs away from it when he sees it's going to be inside the tent, and it's down at about the two by Cox. So it worked out well for Lee, 33 yards, and they'll mark it at the three. Great job by Cox, who went into the end zone, turned and came back toward the ball to down it at the one. With this field position, it's a long way, but this, this is excellent kicking game presence by Torrey Cox, who actually has run into the end zone, comes back out. We didn't get to see him go in and come back out, but as he did that, he's a, there he is. He's back on the orange part so he can see the ball come out, and when he touches it, that ball is dead at that spot. Jackson. Here again. Hit usually right at the line of scrimmage. If he Here's gets two or three as he does here, it's on his own. Excuse me, David, but another observation. Jackson's not breaking any tackles. Pittsburgh's doing an excellent job of hitting the big guy, 230 pounds, wrapping him up, and the first tackler's bringing him down. Pittsburgh calls time here because they want the ball back one more time, figuring they're going to get great field position if they can keep Oregon State bottled up and force the punt. Fitzgerald with the first touchdown pretty a dive as you'll ever see a 40 yard catch Jackson has managed on the other hand only 33 yards on the ground look at it one more time oh, we're going to be seeing this thing oh. a long time this is going to be on all the highlights as are about half of his catches. It's a 15 wow. foot dive is what it is. Five a, yard line. He five takes yards That's and lands in the end zone. He really does make you think of the great NFL players like Jerry Rice like Chris Carter that taught him how to run routes as he was a ball boy up right. there with the Vikings for six years. And that just ended a couple of years ago. Yeah. His junior year in high school he was hanging out with the Chris Carters and Randy Mosses running routes with these guys so that's why I said at the top of the show he's he's ahead of his years in maturity in the football uh, game. Newson wide left Anderson going deep this one thrown too deep again that's at least four that I've counted over. Yeah well Torrey Cox not fooled at all they were trying to stop and go to try and get one over the Cox and Tor uh, to get one over the top of Torrey Cox and he says uh uh. He, he admitted he made the mistake with Newsom touchdown the beginning of the game said it won't happen again. It wasn't going to get beat over the top here but you guys are right Anderson really struggling throwing that deep ball. Well actually we made I made the mistake because he, he did technically get him yeah, down when right, he got that elbow right. on the ground and um, and yet he should have wrapped him up and left no doubt. Third and seven. Each team one timeout. Quarterback draw fooling absolutely no one certainly not Claude Harrier and now guys the punch coming up you're at the one yard line that punter normally 15 yards deep is only going to be about 11 yards deep. Everybody watching football that doesn't coach thinks now the best thing to do right here is to rush the punter and get a block. The best thing to do is to hold them up because yep. they're going to be all tightened down in there and get a nice return maybe running in the end zone and if not get excellent field position and have a chance to at least get a field goal and tie this thing up before the half. We That'll agree Bill. Thing. We absolutely agree don't, on don't that. Say that. No. That's scary. Don't, I agree. Don't say that. Well what is this our 18th game 19th it was bound to happen. All right forget it go for the block. We agreed on something <laughs> way back uh, about the third game yeah. but it's boring to agree all the time. If, if they block it here I, I wanted him to go for the block all along. <laughs> They're not going to do it. Make sure that punter's foot doesn't step on that back line to see he's a 
about a foot in front of it. Flag down. Not much of a kick at all. Robinson at the 37. Down to the 32. But a marker back at the end zone. Well, when it's that quick, Bill, a lot of time is it is it holding when it's gonna procedure? Yeah, well, I'm 0 for 2. I'm not gonna try anymore. I think they'll decline and yeah. take the football where they've got it because they're going to like the field position. Offense, the penalty is declined. Pittsburgh's ball, first down. Because they're already in field goal range, and if they'll be careful and work it down, if they can get some kind of short completions, maybe run the ball a time or two. They have might time. Get down there, yeah, but they have, they're one out of five on third down, one out of six on third down conversion attempts here. Not good at all. And this is the great, this is the first ranked third down defensive team in America for Oregon State over there in the black shirts. Motion from Fitzgerald. Rutherford. Time to deliver and caught at the 21 yard line by Slade. Wow. Enough for a first down if they mark him there. He backed up to the 22. And we'll see how much they give him. It is a first, I think. Calvin Carlisle quickly on the tackle. Shockingly, Oregon State in a two deep zone defense there. And not quite a first as it turned out. So the ball spiked with 43 seconds. And it'll be third and a foot. So now you got third down here, so you got to get the first. Is this a running play, Bill? And then you get to the line quick and kill it and start at second down, really? Well, I think Rutherford is sick with himself right now because I think he thought it was a first down. Yeah. He didn't pay attention long enough, and he went ahead and spiked the ball and made it third down rather than second. There should be plenty of time yeah. from this close at the 23. Well, give to Myrie. Uh, he has the first. second effort. He does have the first at the 20. Now they'll get up. Now they'll kill it. And they'll start it off from second down. 38 seconds as they move the chain. And there's the spike. So second down from the 19 coming. 35 seconds. Now here's the thing. You, you take that shot because they, they've been in position before. In games, we've talked about the close losses where Rutherford has thrown that ball in the end zone and gotten the turnover. Let me say two words to you. Larry Fitzgerald. Yep. If he's on your side, you put it up in the end zone. That's my opinion. That's what Walt needs to do right now. Give him a chance. He's in the slot. And motion again as Rutherford fires over the middle incomplete. It's a zone. Intended for Slade, broken up by Musa. Well, we don't have time to do replays because they're at the line of scrimmage. No huddle here. But what Oregon State's doing is very wise. They've broken their scheme completely and changed to a two-deep zone. They're not going to let Larry Fitzgerald run a fade pattern into the end zone without having two men on it. They're that not going to allow it. That means somebody else is going to have to be the go-to guy if they're going to take that away. Again, we'll see where Fitzgerald lines up. Where's Chris Wilson been this half? Yeah. Fitzgerald in the slot again. Still zone. Wilson stays in to block. Rutherford is sacked back at the 30 with 25 seconds, and they will race Abdul in the field goal unit on. Bill Swan cut. Had 10 sacks this year. Now he's got 11. They've got time. They've got time. 44 yard try coming up. 10 seconds and counted. Snap at seven seconds. Got and it. the kick by Abdul, absolutely perfect. As time runs out in the first half, the true freshman ties it at 10. So they survived the sack of Rutherford by Swancutt and head to the locker room even. Abdul now 11 out of his last 13. That's one heck of a true freshman. What a great kick. Oh, and you go in the locker room with such a good feeling. You manage to get it down the field and get something done, even though you can't make a first down against this defense on third down. This is a heck of a football game. 
pretty much what we thought, probably what Dennis Erickson expected, Dave Ryan. Coach Erickson, an electrifying start for each team at the beginning of this game, then quite a bit of action at the end of the first half. Does the pace of the football game in the first 30 minutes work into your favor for the second half, do you think? Well, it's hard to tell. We've had some opportunities and haven't taken advantage of them like we, like we need to. We need to get points on the board. We've been moving it fairly consistently, and uh, you know, they're playing the run, uh, and we, we've got to be able to throw that play action pass and hit it a few times. If we can do that, then we've got a chance. But they're playing well, and, and then we're playing well, and they, that was a big play for them. What's the theme of your message to your guys at halftime here? Well, just keep hanging in there. We've got to make plays. We've got to be able to run the football a little bit better, and defensively, just keep doing what we're doing. Third bowl game at Oregon State for Dennis Erickson. Going for win number two, Dave. And so far, 10-10. Oregon State and Pittsburgh in the inside bowl at Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix. From Arizona, back to the studio, Chris Fowler. All right, Dave, thanks. So two spectacular touchdowns. One of them on a blown call. A couple of field goals. Okay. Well, it was a blown You're call. Right. The elbow was That's down. Right. We, we, we read that rule. Mo Davenport read him that rule. Brad Edwards looked it up. 10-10 at halftime. What do you think? Well, I've kind of been impressed with Derek Anderson. I mean, Pittsburgh is coming after Mark with a lot of pressure, and he's standing in there. And Bill Curry mentioned it in the telecast. They're playing man-to-man. -man. At some point, you get the feeling if you just make one guy miss, it could be a huge play for Oregon State. I'm surprised at Walt Harris. How come he's not throwing the ball deep to Larry Fitzgerald even more? The short patterns, I don't like that. He's been throwing the ball to other receivers. Get the ball to your best player in the football field. But I'm more impressed with Walt Harris' special teams. It's so difficult to get that field goal team on the field, everyone set up, to get the snap down, the kickoff, 47 yards, make a good that's a very good job by the special okay. teams. A couple very of very good. solid kickers and a good second half coming up. At the Dodge Halftime Report, we'll take you back to Motown. Interesting development, says Boston College. Well, some may have questioned their motivation, but the Eagles came out and uh, made a <laughs> big, loud statement. Highlights ahead. This Halftime Report is presented by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Well, two of the higher ranked defenses to play in bowl week so far. We got a 10 10 halftime score the Panthers and the Beavers. Welcome back to our Dodge halftime report. Earlier tonight, Motor City, the Mid American Conference with Toledo, brought a six game winning streak into the bowl game. They're playing just about an hour from their campus in Motor City. They had most of the fans there. It seemed like a logical thing that Toledo might be the more motivated team against a Boston College team. Well, we weren't sure. So here's a little flashback about 435 Bristol time today. You know, I think when you look at this game, the bottom line is this. In my opinion, Toledo has the better athletes. I mean, people might be surprised at that, but I think they have better overall talent, better speed than does Boston College. But the inferior athletes of BC came out and played a pretty good game. There's Brian St. Pierre, the senior quarterback <laughs> in his final game. He's going to look for Grant Adams. This is like playing against air. There's just no defense for the Rockets. Seven here. on seven drill. 14 zip at that point. It was 14 3 in the second quarter. St. Pierre to Joel Hazard. Watch him weave through the secondary. This is pretty much a story all day. I mean, it was Brian St. Pierre hitting wide open wide receivers, just running free. You know, apparently they have a little talent on that team. Yeah, four possessions, four <laughs> touchdowns. Here's the fifth possession. Once again, he goes to Adams in the slot. 40 yard touchdown. Five different Eagles scored in the first half. It was 42 18. I think he's got a little chippy here. Watch 68 for Toledo there. A little scrum. Right, left, oh, right, left. Deep. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. Then 79 gets Ooh. into the action, knocking guys down. They had a late hit on St. Pierre out of bounds right here. And the time O'Brien's team wasn't about to stop playing. They uh, kept after it in the second half. And St. Pierre, in his final game of his college career, has a career high. 342, 25 of 35 and three touchdowns. It's BC's first nine win season since 1993. That was the year they beat Notre Dame and spoiled the Irish National Championship hopes in South Bend. And a nice way, I think, for the Eagles seniors to go out. They began their career as freshmen, getting humiliated in the inside bowl by Colorado. They turned the tables on Toledo tonight. Sometimes as an analyst, you do your best to <laughs> look at the game, look at the statistics, look at where they come from conferences, look at which team might be happy to be there and which isn't. Sometimes just frankly wrong. And I think what happened, Mark, here was a situation where I looked at this game and saw a team that had been kind of up and down. and. I just wasn't right about this game, and I'm, I'm happy to say I was wrong about this game. You're just coming with the love today. You wish me a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. You admit you're wrong. Are you, sure, are you feeling okay? Is I, well, fine with I you? was wrong. I've learned being married seven years, it's okay to say you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll tell you, I was very impressed by Boston College, the way that they played today. I think they played a perfect game this afternoon, particularly in the first half. They didn't miss a beat in the first half offensively, throwing the ball, Brian St. Pierre, running the football. They rushed for close to 150 yards in this football game. But this is one of those typical games you could tell that one team was very prepared. That was Boston College. They had their jaw set. They came out from play one, and they took it right to Toledo. And Toledo came in. You know, I, th I thought they were a little lackadaisical, to tell you the truth. You know, I said at the beginning, you know, Tom Ansett, he's joking around with everybody before the game. I thought that was a good thing. I was with Trevor. I thought that, you know, they play relaxed, but Boston College just put the hammer down. I think they were overwhelmed. I, I mean, I think they played hard. Toledo did not show up. They were just overwhelmed. Don't beat yourself up, big guy. Yeah. I, no, nobody really here saw this coming, to be fair. No, nobody no, saw but, that but, kind but, of But the thing is, those superior athletes, they got to learn how to tackle. <laughs> well, I should be better. Coming up, we'll get a chance to say who's superior, K-State or Arizona State. I get this one right. <laughs> In the first half, look at that catch by Larry Fitzgerald. Oh. Panthers and Beavers tied at 10. We're coming back. Hmm. It does make you want to take the clubs to Phoenix. We have so many meetings out there, I'm not going to get a chance. Yeah. But not that the, you guys are the ball goes further sad there. about that. <laughs> does it? I like that. I'll never know. Welcome back to the Dodge Halftime Report. Bowl week continues tomorrow. One of our three games, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Now, back in 89, Kansas State took on Arizona State, a 31-zip blanking of the Wildcats. But that was Bill Snyder's very first game with the Wildcats, and a lot has changed with that program. Wildcats, the biggest favorite a bowl season against Arizona State. But the last four Holiday Bowls decided by a total of 16 points. And the Holiday Bowl is responsible for some wild games. Two of the seven highest scoring bowl games in bowl history. Here's Mike Tirico, Kirk Herbstreet with a preview. We have seen great individual performances and terrific teams come through San Diego as we hit the 25th anniversary of the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Good chance to remind you why this game has become so special. Close games, no bowl game year in, year out is tighter than the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. And then the scoring gets you night in, night out, year in, year out. High scoring offenses, whether it's the WAC or this year the Pac-10 and the Big 12. And you always get the great weather out here, so I'm going to have to put away your sunglasses for a second to talk about the offenses that could be lighting up the scoreboard in Qualcomm Stadium. Well, it's always, you talk about the Holiday Bowl, you're right. You always talk about points. Let's start with Kansas State and start with their quarterback, L. Roberson. Continue to improve throughout the year. I think he finished the year as maybe the most athletic quarterback in all of college football. He can also hurt you throwing. The thing to remember about this offense is it has good balance. He can also hand the ball off to Darren Sproles with low center gravity. And I think as a back to remember next year in all of college football. Now, Arizona State's probably their best chance to remain competitive in this game is to score points with Kansas State. It means Andrew Walter, their quarterback, is going to have to get the ball downfield to Sean McDonald, who finished the year as one of the best wide receivers in all of college football. We met earlier today with Terrence Newman, one of the best defensive backs in the country, yes. and he said, all this talk about a high-scoring game, don't they realize we got the best defense in the country? Yeah. We'll see. That's and all he had to say. He's one of the main reasons why Terrence Newman won the Jim Thorpe Award. It goes to the best DB in the country, but he's also a terrific a kick returner as well. He's dynamic. But there's a dynamic guy on the Arizona State defensive side. We speak of Terrell Suggs, who led the country in sacks and was the top lineman and the top defensive player in the award show this year. All right, Mike, thank you. And we'll see if Kansas State shows up motivated because you never know what you're going to get when they show up in a bowl game. But there are some pretty ugly numbers on the Arizona State side. That's why they're a big underdog. 25 touchdown passes allowed in the last 10 games. They better create some pressure with that guy Suggs. Well, they're going to have to, and Mike and Kirk touched on Terrell Suggs, but the way that he can get after the passer, I want to take a couple of shots of him going after the quarterback. 22 sacks this year, 42 sacks for his career. Here, they try to cut him, they get around him, he gets to Carson Palmer, throws him down anyway against Arizona, just runs over the blocker and gets to the quarterback and sacks him again against USC. This is what makes a great pass rusher, the dogged pursuit, even when the quarterback's already gotten rid of the ball, Trev. He had 22 sacks this year, and I think he won a lot of awards this year, but he didn't win one award that you won the Buckus Award. You had 18 sacks your senior. Well, that's because I really wasn't a linebacker. I was a defensive end. That's another story. But, you know, in bowls, so many times we get to see great individual matchups. They mentioned it earlier, but Terrence Newman versus Sean McDonald, I think, will be a fabulous matchup in this game. You see Terrence Newman here. Hey, he's just a great cover guy. He's got great size here against Texas. You see him leap up to make the interception. Also great in special teams. Here's a punt return. Got great speed, great vision. Obviously, he's going to be a, a key in this game. But I think if Arizona State's going to have a chance in this, you can't just sit there with Andrew Walter and throw the football. Their last game against Arizona, Mike Williams had 162 yards rushing. I'm going to get this one right. Listen, <laughs> Kansas State will blow out Arizona State. 
I think for Arizona State to have any chance, they got to win the turnover battle in a big way. You realize you go back 54 games, Arizona State, when they're winning or breaking even in turnovers, 30 and 1. That's incredible. When they don't win the turnover battle and they lose it, they are 3 and 20. That's a, that's a remarkable. And if they're not style. balanced, you get pressure. They turn, you know, yeah, right. exactly. I think there's a lot of, you know, reasons to think the K-State's going to blow them out, but we'll see. It's some crazy things happen on Bowl Week. 10-10 at the break. We'll be back. This halftime report presented by Dodge. Brought to you in part by 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. Hi, State Buckeyes. Usually buttoned down <laughs> and business-like, but showing up with some Love timely hat. headgear, Tempe. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not, super that I'm I'm not a fan missing. of the hat. Not, no. a, not a fan of the hat, but they were free. Buckeyes. First to arrive, Miami players begin trickling in separately, of course, that Tocitos Fiesta Bowl on January 3rd. The mainstay Independence Bowl up next, a, a weird spot, Shreveport, for Nebraska to be at 7-6, and six, coming off a two-game slide, and not many of the Husker faithful have followed them down there. Haven't They've they? decided that it looks a lot like Omaha, so they're staying in Omaha. But still down in Shreveport, Jeff Hollinger and Todd Christensen with the preview. <laughs> As home to most of America's B-52s, Barksdale Air Force Base has been a vital participant in Operation Enduring Freedom. Its bombers have made the prevailing airstrikes in Afghanistan. I know many of the men and women here are great football fans. They're excited about the mainstay Independence Bowl, and I'm sure they won't mind if we make a little bit of a, an air analogy concerning uh, Eli Manning. It's certainly apt. With the leading rusher a scant 350 yards, the onus of the success of the offense falls squarely on the shoulders of number 10. And he has responded, thrown for over 3,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. He continues to live with the specter of his older brother, and I think sometimes the expectations are unrealistic. But it's my feeling that Eli Manning has had a fantastic campaign in 2002. Meanwhile, some quarterbacks are more old school, as menacing on the ground as they are in the air. Nebraska's Jamal Lord comes immediately to mind. Certainly a difficult year for Nebraska, but the lone spot had to be the 1,329 yards put up by Jamal Lord. And when you think of the number of great quarterbacks that they have had here, Tommy Frazier, Turner Gill, Scott Frost, and of course even last year's Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch, to think that that's the most rushing yards by any quarterback in the history of Cornhusker football, very impressive. Let's go back 30 years ago. How about Jerry Taggy? Not quite the same runner, but he did get him a national title. <laughs> All right, two schools that have never met on a football field, Ole Miss and Nebraska, they are tradition rich. It's the mainstay Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana. All right, Jeff, thank you. That is the middle game in tomorrow's triple header. Trev is going to track down the rumor that Eli Manning is dating Brittany. We're getting that's, to the bottom. That's what I've heard. Ravi told me that that's on the, the word. Yes, and the entertainment <laughs> beat is on ET tonight. Right. Yeah. We'll be back. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. On a clear, chilly night with the roof open, Bank One ballpark to site for the inside bowl, 10-10, Pittsburgh and Oregon State. All right, now let's send it down below to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, thanks a lot. This game is being billed as college football like you've never seen it before. One highlight for the fans here at the Inside Bowl at the Bob. They're able to keep all footballs that are kicked into the stands. Unfortunately for one fan, he took it one step too far. This is the Abdul field goal for Pittsburgh to end the first half. And at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see Greg Stofak of Denver, Colorado, make an unbelievable catch. However, we're at a baseball stadium. He goes right into the dugout, which would be down the first baseline, landed on the right side of his head, and he hurt his wrist badly. He's been immobilized as you can see and taken off for precautionary measures. They think he's going to be okay. Got full movement in all extremities. And the good news is, guys, he hang on. Ball was able to hold on to it and he's got the football for a souvenir. Well, that's well, the that's, very least they could do it for him. That, that's a great I job. I don't think I would want that football that bad. Well, he caught that thing like Larry Fitzgerald. That was an God excellent Larry. catch and we're, we're, we're glad it sounds like he's going to be all right. Sure but hope he's okay. Really is kind of unique here. The ball goes into the stands. The fans catch it. Normally they have to throw it back. Uh, tonight they get to keep it. But the guy dove into. Yeah. I don't think he dugout. meant to. I don't think he really meant I mean, to. You know, it, big league catchers know where yeah. the dugout is. He well, didn't have a chance to study that. I think he had the proper cleats on. Underway with the second half kickoff. Abdul. Brandon Cadenice. A 
to the 30. And Oregon, Oregon State going from there in a 10-10 game. And we go back to the touchdown they scored where Newsom should have been called down when the elbow hit at midfield. That's gone now. What can they do to continue the momentum? Uh, talking about Pittsburgh that they got by Abdul's uh, late field goal. Well, what they got to do is continue to play great defense. They've been able to bottle up Steven Jackson. He's got 15 carries for 33 yards. I mean, that's just really uncharacteristic for him. Yeah, and they do need to get Jackson on the goal a little bit, as Dennis Erickson told Dave uh, Ryan before half. Then you can work in the play action pass, something they have not been able to do at all. Jackson has to reverse field a flag down. Jackson in a foot race. Tiz Morris with an angle and catches him at the 10, but the marker came right where Jackson reverse field, and it will come back, holding Oregon State. There's going to be no one as disappointed as Jackson who had to run that whole way. 59 well, yards worth. That was a beautiful run. Once again, he was bottled up, and for the first time tonight, Pittsburgh's defense made a contain error, let him bounce it and get to the outside on the other side. And we saw the speed that Dennis Erickson told us about. And he outran almost everybody. During the run, holding offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Well, we'll okay. see if we can pick up who is the uh, guilty party here. Starts to the well, right. It's 84 again. He's been holding all night long. Right here. It's U.S. Tim U.S. should have been called about 10 or 12 other times. So sooner or later that gets you. You've got to keep those hands in and keep them between the shoulder pads. But a great run by Jackson who shows the kind of speed and versatility he has. That in effect is a 69 yard penalty back to the 21. Anderson's throw is caught on a slide by Newsom. Out to the 33. And ESPN game track early in the third quarter. Larry Fitzgerald, let's watch it again. Takes off at the five, makes the catch of the end zone seven up in Pittsburgh at that point. Jackson averaging 138 33 so far tonight and replaced by Dwight Wright after that 59 yarder call back. Wright has the same luck Jackson's had. Hit by Gerald Hayes behind the line of scrimmage. Same guy. And Gerald's getting the job that he really needs from his men up front. 96, Vince Petrunas, Dan Stevens, number 94. Those defensive tackles are doing a great job, Mike. Boy, they're giving him a place to shoot the gap. He's not being blocked. He's making his behind the line of scrimmage. As the coaches were saying, this D-line for Pittsburgh, they almost use them like an offensive line at times to block the offensive line of Oregon State to keep them off of Moore and of Hayes to make the tackles. But they've been getting their fair share of plays as well at D-line. Jackson still gets the breather. Wright stays in. Anderson has Ewis across the middle for the first down. He drags Sean Robinson out to the 44. Gain of 14 for the junior from Eugene. Numbers at the half. You see no turnovers. How, how odd is that, Bill? For all the time off you have from the last game of the season, until the bowl game and the practices and his coaches you give them time off to have that right there. Well I think that's a tribute to the coaches and the players concentration because normally you expect to have a couple of turnovers in the first half of your bowl game. Oregon State the number one rushing team in the pac net averaging 160 on the ground virtually no running game tonight. Drop by Cole Clayson. Across midfield. Jackson and back in for this set of downs it'll be second and ten and you said it Bill this is what Pittsburgh's plan is take Steven Jackson out of the game force Derek Anderson that man right there to beat us Pittsburgh thinks if it's in Anderson's hands that they have the advantage the Panthers have the advantage that's their thought and Dennis Erickson's thought to counter that is that we're going to keep running and we're going to make some yards and then we're going to throw the play action off the run and we've got to connect on some of those deep play action throws. Jackson will toss it right back to Anderson on the flea flicker. He will throw it away, intercepted by Tez Morris. Marker down, though. Morris returns to the 23-yard line. Wow. An ill-fated flea flicker returned 35 yards by the redshirt freshman from Hamilton, Ohio. They will decline and keep the ball. 
and it was Tim Ewis on the hold again, number 84. Simply has a bad habit of grabbing cloth. And I don't know if the uh, coaches talk to the officials at the half, Mike, but they're on to him now. They certainly are. And Anderson, look at the, the pressure coming late on Anderson as he gets the pitch. He can't get enough Good into God. this throw. He can't step into it at all because Brian Benneke is getting into his face there. So he has no mustard on that ball at all. So far underthrown. Very easy for Morris to step in front of that ball. Tez getting the congratulations for setting Pittsburgh up first out of the 23. And Rutherford ready to go deep. There's Fitzgerald. He had to go to the deck to make the catch at the one. And first and goal from there could easily have been a touchdown if it's thrown a little bit higher. Now this is beautiful offensive thinking by J.D. Brookhart. Nice job putting him in motion. He comes across. It is a zone. They were in that too deep. It's a dig pattern. Great job in converting on the touch uh, on the throw, and it should have been a touchdown. I knew I could get that out. Should have been a touchdown with a better throw. High and two tight ends, and Rutherford will keep step in touchdown. Pittsburgh back in front. Oregon State offside, touchdown. This is Pittsburgh taking advantage of Oregon State coming out of their normal defensive game plan. They love to play that man coverage. They love to jam at the line of scrimmage. What they're doing with Larry Fitzgerald, he goes in the slot. He's the motion man. He's always moving. And they're playing zone back there a few times. And that time they got caught again. Fitzgerald makes the big catch, sets up the touchdown. Abdul, who hammered the field goal. At the end of the first half to tie it. Now make up the Panthers again by seven. Nothing new for them. Their last four games all decided by seven points. Half of the one bowl week from the Bob in Phoenix. Sees Rod Rutherford keep for the go-ahead score for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Rod Rutherford, the quarterback, leads Pittsburgh in rushing touchdowns. He just scored his sixth of the year. And it was after Derek Anderson's interception, the first turnover of the game immediately turns into seven for the Panthers in a 17 to 10 lead. So much for the no turnover talk we just had, huh? That ended immediately on the flea flicker. Abdul kicking down to the six yard line. Catanese on the return again. Hit at the 23 yard line. William Ferguson, Pittsburgh, looking back, had this two point try go around. They lost by two to Texas AM. They dominated Notre Dame every way you could statistically, couldn't get enough points with plenty of opportunities, and they lost by eight. That was their worst loss of the season. Then they're throwing to the end zone at the end of the game in the Orange Bowl, overthrown Yogi Roth, and they lose that one by seven. They then give up this late big play to West Virginia and lose the backyard brawl by seven. Four straight seven point results. They lost the last two. Anderson Chase thrown it for Ewis and broken up by Lewis Moore. So this Pittsburgh team again is that close. Everybody likes to go back and say if this what if that but they really have one play in each of their four losses that kept them from 12 and up. And Walt Harris has said, you know what? We're not about the moral victories. They're saying, guys, we were close. Good job. It's like, no, no, no. We've got to make that extra play. We've got to not fumble that ball. We've got to stop that big play. And we've got to get that win. There at that point, rather quickly, he has turned this program around. Right now they have made the most big plays. Second down catch. Kenny Farley, maybe five yards. And immediately hit by Gerald Hayes and what happens when you have this kind of success and you're clearly in control of a program is that other schools come calling and so then the rival recruiters jump on Walt Harris's bandwagon gladly saying yep he's going to get another job so you certainly don't want to go play for him but he has put all those rumors to rest by confronting them directly and saying look I'm going to be here his players are responding both these teams playing hard. We said at the outset tonight are great matchups, and the coaching matchup may be right at the top. 
off the hands of Farley. And after the score, the Panther defense turns in a three and out. And lastly, Bill, to, to, to put a period on this, you talk about Walt Harris and the talk. How about the assistant coaches? Paul Rhodes, a defensive coordinator, was up for the East Carolina job. You become successful, and all of a sudden, other teams are after your assistants be, to become head coaches, so you have that to contend with as well. Carl Toby kicking to Robinson at the 32. Five yard return. Well, that's a good problem. Yeah. If, if yeah, somebody's not coming after your assistance, then you're not having much success. Pittsburgh having some success here in the third quarter. They've broken a 10 10 tie for half, thanks to the Anderson pick. Well, a couple of Beavers that have issues to discuss Derek Anderson and Steven Jackson, either one having their best game. Our Coors Light storyline, Larry Fitzgerald up to five catches, 77 yards, and the first touchdown. Only 33 yards on 15 carries for Steven Jackson, the leading rusher in the Pac-10. Newsom with the 65-yard catch and run, over 100 yards on his five catches. Hey, look at that pile moving forward. <laughs> wow. They're not booing, they're looing. Lusaka Polite. Lusaka Polite is a load. He's a big fullback, a terrific blocker, and pretty darn good runner. This was impolite <laughs> on his part. Look at this. Talk about it. you just keep the old legs moving. Great lesson here for the little ones watching. Look at the leg drive. Nice job by Chad Reed, the center two, number 64, and Rob Petiti, number 78, the left tackle. Good blocking up front. Gain of seven. Back to Myrie, close to the first down. Close to midfield. Yep, he got the first down. Mike, we're starting to see the Pittsburgh line yep. take control, it would appear. And this is exactly what we saw against Virginia Tech. Again, Virginia Tech, when Pittsburgh played them, was number one against the run, giving up just 40 yards a game. Pittsburgh ran for 275 yards in the win, and this is exactly what we saw, Bill. You're right. Coming in the second half, the offensive line for Pittsburgh just started to really roll. High formation on first and ten. Play fit. Rutherford for Slade. And incomplete. NBA season continues tomorrow night, ESPN 2 at 7.30 Eastern. The pregame show NBA scoreboard at 8 Eastern. Ray Allen, the Milwaukee Bucks in the Meadowlands against Jason Kidd and the defending Eastern Conference champion New Jersey Nets. NBA Fridays on ESPN 2 this week for the Bucks and the Nets. They just gave the Boston Celtics. Oh the Nets are smoking yeah, aren't they? 36 point wow. Christmas present for a loss. You like yeah. that deal? We'll talk about after this play getting the tumbo there and giving up. I like Jason Kidd. Oh he's a stud. Rutherford with a blitz. Gets the screen off to Myrie. Myrie Carrying a tackler right near, but not quite to the first down marker, Noah Happy. Nice job by Noah Happy running it down, but you got to make the tackle a little quicker than that. Again, this is a screen setup. <laughs> Wake up. Come on, a little time change. I know. <laughs> a little yawn out of one. <laughs> well, that was an all out blitz. And, and if you can block the guy that's covering the back, then you got a chance to run that thing in the end zone. If you get it off, and he got it off, nice job by Rutherford. He just was very calm, and then the lineman turned and ran Myrie down. Otherwise, he'd still be running. Chance for the Beaver defense to get off the field, or the Panther drive to continue. That will be the case. On the sneak, Rutherford gets good two yards out of it. I know Oregon State's great in the third down situations, Bill, but third and about half a yard, you can you can do that. In the first half, Pittsburgh was just one of seven on third down it's easy to convert convert maybe when it's a half a yard well that's the kind you want yeah. you, those third and nines are a little yeah. bit more problematic that third and a half yard is nice but there it is I mean this is a stunning number by Oregon State third down defense 24.7 percent on the year their last two games they left three of 26 third down conversions and forget about it in the fourth quarter all year Rutherford all day to heave deep for Slade overthrown. We have had a ton of open receivers overthrown. Most of them by Anderson, but Rutherford does it here. 
And to be able to throw the ball that deep and have you got that means the play has to develop which means you have to have time. Look at that. Nobody near can't even see Rutherford. He's out of the picture. No linemen are near. Matt Morgan Brian Anderson Chad Reed Dan LaCarte Rob Petiti just moving those feet keeping those hands up. I think pass protecting is the second toughest thing in sports second only to hitting a baseball. Very difficult to do that. Panthers doing it very consistently tonight. Rutherford has very seldom felt any bit of pressure. Fitzgerald pulls away from Mewson. Gets a block from Marcus Furman. And they'll mark him out of bounds at the 24 gain of 17. Well, we see Mewson get beat on the touchdown. We see Mewson get beat on the in route to the one yard line by Fitzgerald. And here Mewson misses the tackles. We have a flag down. Again, Fitzgerald in motion. He's been in motion all night. Quick pass saying, we'll get it to our guy. We think he can shake your guy. It's exactly what Fitzgerald does. Getting the extra yard. Pretty close to a late hit, too. Yep. They wave off the flag. First and 10, Pittsburgh, 24 of Oregon State. And Dennis Erickson already trailing by seven. 10 10 at the half. The Panthers have dominated the third quarter. Sophisticated offense finding the mismatch. That's what you're seeing. One drop early. Since then, five catches, 89 yards. One touchdown, one near touchdown. Last possession got him down to the one. Myrie with a toss sweep. Got away from Swan Cut, but then plenty of black jerseys arrived to help corral Myrie for a loss. Now, Swan Cut ran him down from behind. Because he did not have contained responsibility on the backside, but I would not be surprised to see Pittsburgh come back with some kind of reverse or naked because Swan cut just took off down the line of scrimmage. And normally the defensive end on the backside has responsibility for anything coming back. Reverse responsibility. They're exploratory studies. That's where you uh, explore look, look for stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah there you go. I think they call that undecided ride at the school. Okay. Loss of five. Rutherford in the grasp of Happy and down at the 34. Noah Happy, former walk on from Simi Valley, California. Happy takes care of Matt Morgan, who's trying to block him. Again, not a big guy. 6'3, about 200, or 6'5, I should say, about 240. Nice move on the inside. That's his fourth sack of the year. Junior making his 24th straight start tonight. As big a play as Oregon State has had. They force a third and 20 empty backfield. Five wide. Rutherford quarterback draw, and that goes nowhere. Well, Happy's really happy. Yeah. yeah. Happy's a versatile guy. He's a long snapper for punts. Obviously a tough guy picking up the pace here and really pretty much knocked him out of field goal range. They're going to have to punt the ball. Ooh. Starts up out wide comes underneath. This is what Dennis Erickson does. He he was a, he was a recruited linebacker to D line. He recruits safeties and makes them linebackers. That's how Dennis Erickson he gets the great athletes shifts their position a little bit for him and they just out athlete the guy in front of him. Flag is down the punt by Lee is absolutely perfect. Cox finally rounding it, they'll say, at the three. But see what the flag is back at the line. Probably a formation error by Pitt. Yep. That's the call. They'll make him kick it again. Good call, Bill. I've missed the last two. I'm not guessing anymore. Big Ten officiating crew headed by Illegal David Whitmore. On the offense, five yards, previous spot, repeat fourth down. Well, hard to hit two that good back to back. Andy Lee will try though. Uh, Lee has put 13 of them inside the 20 this year. He's had 11 touchbacks, so almost even there. So we'll see if he can drop it again.
Well, they officially set the ball over for a quick word. It's the first meeting ever between these two. The first time for Pittsburgh to play anybody from the Pac-10 in seven years plus since the 1995 opener. Team that started eight and two before losing to Miami and West Virginia, but they can win nine for the first time in 20 years. Walt Harris has brought a long-awaited run of success to the University of Pittsburgh. Not too shabby. Lee down to the oh. one and Cox got it again. Tapped it back to the five. Cox is having a career special teams night. What a wonderful job. Again, he knows exactly where he is. That's the smart thing he's doing. He's along the end zone line, in this case, the goal line. The ball does not break the plane in the judgment of the official. If that ball crossed the plane in college football, it would go out to the 20 yard line as a touchback. The official on the on the goal line uh, in his judgment Cox got there soon enough. Break up Bobby McFerrin. Why not? Don't worry. Be happy. 17 10 Panthers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Insight Bowl. Presented by Insight. Only Insight delivers the best combination of computer products, services, and price. Insight, whatever it takes. And in part by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Oregon State back up to its own five. After more terrific special teams play by Pittsburgh. Stephen Jackson standing two yards back at the end zone. As the lone back takes the handoff right at the goal line and run down by Hayes at the line of scrimmage again. It's at least a half dozen head to head Hayes versus Jackson collision. Here we go back to the. The saving now, now in the NFL if your body is in the end zone like that that is a touchback but not in college the player can be standing in the end zone if he wants as long as the ball doesn't cross the plane of the end zone now it did look like the ball was pretty close yes, it did to break breaking the plane there but the body is allowed to be in the end zone as long as you knock the ball back out or the ball does not cross the end zone line the goal line average on first down the last 11 first down snaps one yard for Oregon State. A roll and another overthrow almost intercepted by Cox. Intended for Newsom, who's got to be frustrated. He's had a big night, over 100 yards receiving. He could have been double that if not for the overthrows by Derek Anderson. Yeah, and Cox is even more frustrated because that was an easy catch. There's an old adage about being a defensive back because you don't have good hands, and Cox would not like to hear that, but this is a catch you've got to make. It's an overthrow, which is what Anderson's been doing all night, which is playing right into Pittsburgh's hands. Paul Rhodes, the fine defensive coordinator, has made an intelligent gamble that Anderson can't beat him with his arm. It's working, but Cox has got to come up with catches like that. Well, that's two interceptions for the year. Unanimous first team all Big East corner. Anderson from his end zone. That one's high, but not too high this time for Newsom, and he brings it in for a first down. Wow. We talk about Fitzgerald getting up. Newsom doing the same thing. Sean Robinson on the coverage. Eric, uh, Derek Anderson having the problem all night of overthrowing, but Newsom says, you know what, I'll just go up and get it. Gain of 11. Got another year, has the Oregon State single season yardage and touchdown record. Scored his 12th of the year earlier tonight. Jackson run down again by Gerald Hayes, the broken record for a loss of one. Down to Dave Ryan. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. We talked about Derek Anderson, the Oregon State quarterback, and his huge feet. You guys mentioned it earlier. It turns out a size 16. Now, Nike, in this particular version of the shoe, only makes up to a 15. So a 17-size mole has got to be stretched to make it into a 16. But believe it or not, Derek does not have the largest feet on the team. That belongs to Brandon Scales. He is a redshirt freshman defensive end, size 18, Dave. I think he could jump in one of those and float up the <laughs> Pacific Coast back up to Oregon. Well, Anderson's just plain big. 6'6", 235. Low snap. And in 
incomplete. Caught by U.S. but out of bounds. Now again, Oregon State in the situation of third and ten or more. Here it's third, going to be third and eleven. And this is this is a definite advantage to Pittsburgh. Now last time, just just this last series, Anderson was able to complete it to Newsom for the first down. Now he's faced with it again. So Pittsburgh is throwing everything yeah. they got at him. They're coming with six. They're coming with seven. They're blitzing like crazy. Anderson standing in there. This looks like a catch. It must have been ruled that he did not have control of the football. A possession of the ball, exactly. Four wides, third and 11. And again, over Newsom, who is frantically arguing that he was interfered with. He can't get any takers. I mean, last time it was that, guys, what they run? 11 yard route and got the first down? This time they try and go long. Well, they got it. They know Derek Anderson can make the throw, and they're thinking sooner or later <laughs> yeah. he's going to hit it, and that time it wasn't open. Standing just outside the end zone is Toby. He's not had a putt blocked all year, former walk on. And they get the Panthers to jump and whistles before the snap. Shante Spencer, in particular, drawn off sides from the left end spot. Pittsburgh was really messing with their protection scheme. They were walking a man in and out, back and forth, and causing the wide man to come in for protection purposes. And they got everybody rattled over there on the offensive side. Fire to the snap. Defense in the Madison goal. Five yards. Repeat, four thousand. Shante Spencer walking back and forth with another man rotating out to cover the wide receiver, the, the outside man, and they end up messing themselves up. Here he goes again. Same thing. Forcing the man back in tight. They came after Toby. It's off of beauty. Nose down spiral. Robinson from the 35. Breaks a tackle. Cuts it back. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sean Robinson. 65 yards for the touchdown. That is not supposed to happen, Bill, when you're going for the block. That means the whole punt team is down there covering the punt. That's exactly right, but a great individual effort with a little help and a missed tackle. A missed tackle by Jamerson, number nine, cornerback for Oregon State. Gave Shante Robinson all the room he needed, and he exploded down the sideline after a very well-played special teams night. He got hit harder. 65 yards for Sean Robinson, senior from Warren, Ohio. Makes it 23 10, and now Abdul makes it 14. Pittsburgh over Oregon State with a pair of third quarter touchdowns. Sean Robinson breaking a tackle and then untouched from about midfield on. Before tonight, Sean Robinson's longest punt return this year was 15 yards. This one goes 65. Well, here's the problem. Again, it's a block, so you have all the Oregon State players. You got to fan out. Bill, what's it called? Lane integrity. Uh-huh. No lane integrity. They're stacked on each other. He's able to break it to the outside where all of a sudden he finds some help. That should not happen when the punt return team is trying to block the punt. All your guys are coming down there, but you've got to fan out. Yeah, coaches like this stuff. Get smashed in the face, <laughs> face mask gets knocked into his teeth. He's over there with a bloody mouth, but he's happy. <laughs> Thanks, coach. <laughs> Kennedy's. Finally, driven out by William Ferguson. At the 30, and it continues way beyond the whistles down here. And finally, flags all over the place. We have, by the way, now had four. 
punt return touchdowns already in this bowl season. Looks like Gerald Hayes, who's led the way by being a great tackler tonight, took a shot down there at somebody. Very unlike him yep. because he's a poised young man and normally does all his um, work between the white lines. And Gerald, that's what you need to remember. Yeah, that senior's got to know that, Bill. You're absolutely right. Here he is, right here. There's the shot. Yep, that's what was called. Absolutely must maintain After your play, poise. Personal foul. The kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Now you have a great play. And you take a two touchdown lead and now you come back and your defensive team leader is going to give him field position at the 45 yard line simply because he couldn't keep his poise. You can't pop the guy like that. You can't do any damage to him. And he has got his helmet on. Yep. You don't even have your helmet. You need to put your helmet on if you're <laughs> going to do that Gerald. Because somebody's going to hit you back big man. You're a great football player but that's a bad mistake. Pop Chaz Scott in the face. First down from the 45 wild high again and he really hung Kittner out to get blasted by Shantae Spencer. There's the situation here and you're right Bill they gave him good field position on the on the bad penalty but here you have an Oregon State team down 14. Are they going to start to be taken out of that game plan. They have not been able to get a running game going Dennis Erickson said at halftime we're going to continue to try it. They have tried and been unsuccessful doing it. Anderson 12 of 30. Two of his last 10 for only 16 yards. Robinson with the first ever punt return touchdown in a bowl for the Panthers. Fourth this year in the bowl season. Only one all of last bowl season. Anderson this time right on the number two of James Newsom. Best pass this half by far up to the 41. Anderson's history is that he plays extremely well until he starts to get tattooed and hit as he was by Southern Cal this year. Now he's taking some vicious hits tonight and it's caused him to make some mistakes. Not just the deep balls that we've referred to but throwing things up for grabs that have been intercepted a couple of them drop. And then he comes back and makes a throw like we just saw and he shows that there's still life in his poise. Pittsburgh's going to keep coming at him. As they did here. Jackson's going to keep looking in vain for the big holes he enjoyed most of the year. Five yards about the most the Pittsburgh defense has given him. And he's fighting for every yard of it. I mean, he is absolutely fighting for every yard of it. Give that D line and linebacking crew so much credit for Pittsburgh and what they're doing. Average is five and a half yards per carry. Tonight he's getting two. 18 carries, 36 yards. Dennis Erickson expects about a hundred more than that on a typical Steven Jackson night. Beinecke coming on a blitz. That one should have been caught by Kenny Farley right in his hands. Don't forget our Capital One Bowl Week continues here on ESPN with a triple header tomorrow starting with College Game Day's Bowl Special presented by Outback at noon Eastern. One o'clock Southern Miss Oklahoma State in the 2002 Houston Bowl. 430 Eastern. Ole Miss, Nebraska from Shreveport in the Mainstay Independence Bowl at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Kansas State, number six in the country. One of the hottest teams in the country closing the regular season. Try and keep it going against Arizona State in the 25th annual Pacific Life Holiday Bowl from San Diego. Third down and six. Anderson again with a strike to Newsom, beating Teron Gray again for a first down, again at 13. Coach, I like that call. Third and six, you run that eight, nine yard in, get the first down, move the sticks, start another series. When we're done, Sports Center will wrap up the day. Two minutes in the third quarter. Oregon State down 14, working on the backup Pittsburgh corners this drive. Anderson, Newson again at the seven. Working Shante Spencer and Teron Gray 17 yards this time. This is the marvelous talent Derek Anderson possesses and his coach is so happy to work with and he's coming back again and again. He's showing some courage here setting his feet. Nice throw. Newsom makes a cut. Not particularly tight coverage by Shante Spencer there. Should have been right in his hip pocket. 
Cox is back in the starter at one quarter but Spencer stays in not Robinson at the other and it's first and goal Beavers. Anderson sack back at the 14. Nice job of coverage that time by Pittsburgh. That is the second sack tonight for Harriet. Harriet ran him down because he had no place to go with the football. Back to the man coverage. And that's one of those if he sees Harriet coming just a split second sooner because he's out of the pocket he'll get rid of the ball. It won't be intentional grounding outside the pocket. And it's not. Second and goal from the 14 yard line. Anderson's been a little scattered tonight but Erickson says he can be as good as any quarterback I've coached. He's coached Heisman quarterback. It's that much of his potential to the end zone back to the overthrow too tall for Newsom. Almost intercepted for the first time tonight we're seeing a true eight man drop zone with a three man rush that pass broken up by number 31 Tyrone Gilliard. But you see the three people rushing now eight people dropping there is not much place to throw this football awful lot of white shirts all around the end zone and the underneath stuff is easy to break up upon and that's exactly what happens with Gilliard making the play. And you're not used to seeing that but it's a steady diet it just likes it looks like a lot of white shirts back there. Third and goal first time inside the 20 from the 14 and well incomplete as Cox was much closer to that one than Newsom. Well they'll go for the three out of this and again this could have been more disastrous for Pittsburgh the way that Oregon State was driving Bill after the Gerald Hayes penalty which gave uh, Oregon State 15 extra yards. Well Hayes is out there uh, <laughs> leading his troops his defensive <laughs> troops. And that to hold them to three points right here is very important for Pittsburgh, assuming that that's what happens. Ilanimi with a streak of 14 straight will try a 31 yarder. And that streak is still alive. He has now tied the record for kicks, including consecutive seasons. And there's a fan with a ball. He gets to keep that. 15 in a row for Kirk. Illinimi finally gets a scholarship next season and he's tied the school record. That guy got a nice souvenir and yep. it's 24 13. I believe I'd find a scholarship for that guy. I would say so. Gracious. They call that first one of the first half officially a 50 yarder so that matched his longest ever. And Oregon State gets points but just sends a real let down feeling that they had to settle for that three. From first and goal at the seven. Yeah, but I guarantee you, Dennis Erickson is over there saying, "Hey, you got something out of it. You got you put, you answered the bell. You've gone down by 14. Now you came back and you put something on the board." Corey Cox dropping back along with Shante Spencer. 36 seconds of the third quarter. Dominated by Pittsburgh. Hawks a hard time picking it up. Down immediately. And the Panthers will start from their 18 yard line. Honestly, got those things on his. Look at look at the his eyes here. He's got one sideways. Well, that's for glare. So you get oh, yeah, he, but up and down. The, no, but the, see down. the lights are lower here, so the glare's coming in from the side. I don't know. I think so, he's trying to do some kind of a fashion statement, and I don't think it's working. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, there's Myrie drags Terrell Roberts to the 41-yard line, 23 yards for Myrie. You've called this Bill you've called it all night Bill. They just keep hammering away and oh what a great job there by Dan LaCarte 52 takes his man drives him across the hole and when Myrie sees that kind of opening he explodes through it dragging people and he actually ripped away at the Virginia Tech game ripped away from the defensive backs and went on and ran it in the end zone about 65 yards and he darn near did it again. 
He's an impressive bat. That was the game winner at Blacksburg. This gives him 94 yards on 15 carries. Dominating that matchup at tailback with Steven Jackson. The number five running back in the country coming in. Myrie, Fitzgerald, Rutherford. Pretty good, pretty good show for Pittsburgh as we reach the end of the third quarter and an 11 point Panther lead. Can they hang on to it as Capital One Bull Week winds down here in the Bob in Phoenix in the Inside Bowl. Fourth quarter coming. A holiday feeling in the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. And the Inside Bowl reaches the fourth quarter, 24 13 Pittsburgh. 40,533. Right about capacity for football in Bank One Ballpark. Pittsburgh by 11. They start in good shape. Their own 42 yard line. And Lusaka Polite gets his second carry. Gain of four hit by Eric Tuma. The ESPN game track through three quarters. In this first ever meeting of the Panthers and Beavers, Fitzgerald got it started with that incredible dive from the five to the end zone, 40 yards. Robinson with the first ever punt return touchdown in a bowl game for the Panthers. 65 yards, this one would go. 50 yards farther than any return he'd had all year. And still the only Oregon State touchdown the tainted 65 yard catch and run should have been ruled down to midfield for James Newsom. Myrie back to that spin move and no gain. Bill you said in the first half you wouldn't want to teach a running back a spin move. Why not. Don't teach them to spin with the football because it's so likely that the ball is going to come away from the body and as they spin people put their hat on the football and knock it loose. Now this is an absolutely hopeless running play here because there are nine men count them nine in the box. You can see one black hat after another one showing up there until finally Richard Siegler comes down with Myrie and as he spins that ball could be knocked away. Eric Tuma just tattooed the soccer polite the lead blocker yeah. on that one. Wow. They just decided they just decided they were going to run it no matter what the defense was. With the throw on third and six. Well they wanted to Rutherford feeling increasing heat as the second half winds on. Three defensive linemen, Manning, Edwards, Swancutt, all get a piece of Rod Rutherford. Well, this is not like it's anything new for Pittsburgh coming into this game. They've given up 41 sacks. There's the stunt out and underneath. And then up the gut. And a high snap handled by Andy Lee. But he bombs this one back to the 12-yard line, Eric Williams. And what a misadventure. Great, uh, what a oh. great job by Tory Cox. Here's a flag. Here's two flags late. I don't know who the flag's on, but Tory Cox is really playing a great game as a coverer of punts. I did that for a living for a long time, although I did not run like Tory did. I didn't have the decorations. Tory, if you're going to cover punts like that, son, you can put that stuff on your face. It's all right with me. Stands. This is the third punt tonight of better than 50 yards for Lee. 52 yarder, another 52 and a 54. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the returning team. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. Well, they just answered it back. Ger uh, Gerald Hayes from Pittsburgh gave Oregon State one of those last time around, and now Oregon State returns the favor of stupidity. Well, unsportsmanlike means somebody said something yep. that was probably not polite, no pun intended. Could not resist that. <laughs> it was an inappropriate remark. And now they get to start at the five. You know how hard it is to drive from the five? One hand to catch Newsom. Breaks the tackle. Oh, it's really. three yards out. Is of he ball. a great player? How did he catch that ball? That got tipped Look too. That, guy. that ball got tipped. Wow. Got hit. The flight pattern is change of the ball. He goes back for it, one hands it, and then shakes the tackle just to boot. Jeez. 
He had more than twice as many catches as any other Oregon State player. He had 64 coming in. Farley was second with 27. That's how heavily they rely on James Newsom in the passing game. He's had a big night, unlike Jackson, who is the running game. They swing it out to Jackson. That's one way to get the ball into his hand and a little room to work with, and he gets the first down. And Jackson had 15 catches this year. He has nice hands as well. They'll split him out, and they'll go into an empty set with nobody in the backfield with him in the game because they have such confidence he had two touchdowns receiving this year and they now have a first down it's critical to get off that goal line and make the first down so that if you do have to punt at least your punter has room. They've had 14 drives of 80 or more yards this year so they can't extend the marches Kittner. And another first down to the 30. A pretty good Oregon State running back in his own right is down with Dave Ryan. Yeah, that's right, Dave. Ken Simonson here. 5,044 yards and 60 touchdowns at OSU, but you're not in the NFL. Now, you had a good run with the 49ers, a couple other teams. Where's your status right now in terms of pro ball? Well, right now, I'm out here in Arizona just training uh, twice a day and just working the phones and got a good team behind me that's really encouraging and just trying to stay in shape and wait for something to happen. I'm sure you've enjoyed watching the progress of Steven Jackson. How would you evaluate his play? Man, he's one of the best running backs in the country right now. And and he'll get the attention he deserves next year. I think it's kind of good. He didn't get too much limelight and hype because next year he is going to be thrust into that limelight in a real big way. And what do you want to say to Mike Golick up there? The last time you were on the field, uh, Oregon State, Notre Dame, Fiesta Bowl? Ain't no hard feelings, Mike. You know, I'm still somewhat of a Notre Dame fan. Oh, I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> they absolutely tattooed Notre Dame 41 to 9 a couple of years ago in the Fiesta Bowl. And just a fantastic performance by well, why did you have your head in your hand because I was really hoping they weren't going to bring it up. <laughs> Thanks Rhino. Anderson in trouble. Dropped at the 25. Then Scrochunas. Mike sorry. Oh, no. we, we got this started. We, we got to carry it the whole way now and pleasant memories for Jonathan Smith. All Oregon State fans, a night where everything went right up the road in Tempe. Open your eyes. Come on, watch it. Come on. Are own, you, own your pain. Are you guys showing a video right now? I really can't see anything. Then it's number four in the country, 11 and one. Oh. That is the best bat I think any team's ever given a head coach. That was a direct hit. Clayson with the catch, first down of the 43. And Anderson seems maybe to finally have solved his wild high problems. Well, what, what Anderson needs, and Dennis Erickson knows this, so does the offensive coordinator, Tim Lapano. That he needs an off season of just throwing, 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 throwing. It's an accuracy thing. It's a footwork thing. He gets a little spread eagle. He doesn't really step through his throw every time, but he's got so much raw ability. Kittner juggled, lost it. Well, and we've seen the long ball tonight. There's Tim right there. Tim Lapano's. Worked at a lot of good places, including Purdue University, where he was a part of that Joe Tiller offense, and he understands what he wants to get done here, and Anderson's growing into this job. Seems to change a little bit. We've seen the long ball. We've seen the overthrows. Now we're seeing the short to mid-range passes, and Anderson has been on mark the last few. This team for Lepano has actually outscored that 2000 team. Incomplete thrown behind Seth Trimmer. Tomorrow night, more NBA action on ESPN2. We're going to get 7.30 Eastern, the pregame NBA scoreboard, 8 Eastern. Ray Allen in Milwaukee, Jason Kidd in New Jersey. From the Meadowlands, NBA Friday on ESPN2. More, you can log on to ESPN.com. That's what I wanted to bring up before to you, Dave. Matumbo deal going. I know he's out now with the wrist. You think that was a good deal for the net? I, I tell you, with the success they had last year, I was shocked that yeah. they were so quick to break that team up. I was too. Van Horn to a rival. Anderson from the gun. Third and long underneath. Jackson dropped immediately. They are not letting him breathe. Lewis Moore immediately on a new midfield. And uh, another new defense or new for Anderson to look at a two man rush dropping nine that time. 
So he had no choice but to throw the underneath route and hope that Jackson could break a tackle and make the first down and that was not to be in this case. But they did drive the ball off the goal line and they're going for it. Fourth and five from the forty nine. I think this is a mistake. I agree. A second time with you tonight, Paul. I agree. Flag is down. Clayson with the first down catch in front of Spencer if it stands. Well. And it's not procedure penalty. I don't think they're going to go for it now. I would be shocked. I was shocked they did it there, Bill. I agree with you. Now they'll move it back five. I really believe they have to punt this thing. Well, I do too. And I, uh, Dennis Erickson. Uh, Illegal formation. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Has a reason. Dennis Erickson has a reason for everything he does. So he had a play there that he felt like had an excellent chance of working, and it did. Yep. But they made a formation mistake, which is just unthinkable in a situation like this. And it looks like they're going to try for it again. And I think that's really, yep. really a poor choice. I, I agree. Let's keep an eye on Newsom. He's. I don't even think he's in the game. No. Nope. That's amazing. Wow. They go. This is a two-score game, and then this is not the time to be going for it on fourth down. They go two wides, and Anderson has to throw up a prayer. No chance. Never had a prayer. Well, Newsom has to be nicked up or something because I can't even believe he wouldn't be on the field. There had to be some situation there why he wasn't. Well, Brian Beinecke, number 15, got some pressure. He doesn't get much attention because he's out there with Gerald Hayes and Lewis Moore. Did a great job there. Beavers decide not to play for field position. They decide to go for a fourth and ten. Didn't get it. Still down 11. Well, see, it's it's cold, and most of your heat escapes through your head, so it's important <laughs> to wear a hat in conditions yeah. like this. That's also a good way to store your popcorn. Look at this guy, this group. We saw this guy Bill down on the field before. He had like the tight blue velvet pants. That's those same kind of pants you wear. Oh, I was just gonna say, I thought you'd look good in them. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Panthers up 11, just stop the fourth down. Go to Myrie, and a gain of three. So Bill what's going through Dennis Erickson's mind when you go obviously it's two scores down but there was over nine minutes to go when that went on and we both think that was the wrong wrong move to make. Well, all I can figure is that he feels like his defense must be getting tired and he did not want to give the ball up and it was worth taking that gamble to him to keep from having this happen that's about to happen right now I think because they are grinding him down they might put one up to Fitzgerald I would or they might just keep handing it to Myrie. Rutherford on a roll and then cuts it back. He'll lose one. And that's a planned play. And we I, I thought we'd actually see some more of that. With Rutherford rolling out, he also has faked handoffs and then would follow the back right up into the hole. He's run for over 400 yards this year. We haven't seen it much tonight. Dave, you touched on it that the coaches feel he hasn't been running the ball as well, but his passing has certainly improved. But I thought we would see a little more of him running tonight. No, he's protected the ball. They said he is spectacular when he protects the ball, which he has. They still do not have a turnover. And 412 yards, five, now six touchdowns, counting one tonight on the ground for Rutherford. Dangerous every single snap. It's Gerald motioning. Third and nine. Furman wide open out of the 31. Dave with more on Rod Rutherford. Dave, you have to be impressed with the play of Rod Rutherford tonight. Something we have not seen from him all evening long is a lot of emotion on the field. Even though he has increased his practice intensity by nature, he's not an outspoken person. Coaches tell us they've really worked with Rod on that to be more vocal in the huddle. And he's been interacting with his teammates on the sideline a lot here tonight, but really that calming presence I think has had a better effect than a screamer that you see a lot of quarterbacks in college football. A lot of uh, schools recruited him something other than a quarterback. Walt Harris promised if he came to Pittsburgh, that's where he'd play. Him. Had them kind of in a slash roll early, some goal line quarterback, some wide receiver. As polite carries for no gain, but last couple of years, Harris has stuck to his promise. And their relationship. <laughs> 
can uh, strike many moods. Well, they went through a really hard time early this year when the fans were all over Rutherford. Rutherford, they wanted to put Palco in, the true freshman, highly recruited quarterback out of Imperial, Pennsylvania. And uh, Walt just did exactly what a head coach ought to do. He backed his man. He said, look, Rutherford's the quarterback. There's no controversy. Just get off his back. And Rutherford earned his spurs as the season progressed. And we're Pennsylvania Player of the Year. Harris won over a late recruiting surge by uh, Penn State. Here's another oh, flag. Boy. Well, while they're piling up, unpiling all that, I am really surprised we haven't seen squat out of Chris Wilson tonight <laughs> great tight end that can just fly I can't imagine with all this man coverage that you wouldn't get the ball in the hands of Chris Wilson who can outrun Larry Fitzgerald one catch seven yards Yeah, just and that was the first play of the game and, and, and I agree too because they opened the game we said five wide receivers set he was in there but I count him as a wide receiver yeah, all the time he runs like a wide first receiver foul. this is Rest just in the face mask defense 15 yards wow. automatic first down well, Oregon State gives please. up over a hundred yards a game in penalties and here we are again as they hand over a crucial 15 yards on down into their red zone area Smile on that kid. I'm really looking for him tonight. Nope, nope, they're not. He's just a junior, another year, but I tell you what, the pros are going to be liking that in the West Coast offense type style split now. Faster than Larry oh, Fitzgerald. Boy. They ran a 40, and he was pulling away from Fitzgerald at the end. Myrie undercut by Weathersby. He saves a touchdown at the five. He's fast and he can block too. Yeah, well, maybe that's his job tonight, Bill. If they're not going to throw it to him, you got to block. He's not overly large, 6'3, about 240. Hands on. Nice turn. Nice turn at the end there. To all in Jason Jean Baptiste. Yeah, he just whipped 47 Baptiste. And actually, Oregon State's done a good job in the red zone defense, giving up only uh, 23 scores out of 36 times down here for the opponent. That's pretty good, but. Touched Brandon Myrie. Touchdown. Now, I got to say this. I have a lot of respect for Dennis Erickson as a football coach, but that was a direct result of the attempt to make it on fourth down as the Oregon State fans begin to file out here. Giving them that field position was just wonderful for Pitt, and they just worked it down there and got him a touchdown out of it. And probably put the game out of reach you guys having a little Virginia Tech deja vu <laughs> that yeah. running, running yeah. game kind of taking over for all over Pittsburgh again. yeah Myrie has his fourth hundred yard game of the year 20th carry 112 yards and the touchdown which should salt the inside bowl away from Pittsburgh we got him back for another year a duel with the PAT just inside the left upright most Panthers will come back. Slade's a senior. Reed, the center, is a senior. Anderson, the right guard. Everybody else will return to try and build on what's headed toward a nine win season. It's looking like that one's going to fly home to Pittsburgh. Inside Bowl trophy with five minutes and 38 seconds standing between them and their ninth win of the year. Would be a first since 1982, the end of the Dan Marino era. Cadenese to the 25. And now Oregon State down 18 under five and a half minutes. And they'll get to work trying to slice into this fourth quarter deficit when we come back to Phoenix. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Insight Bowl, presented by Insight. Only Insight delivers the best combination of computer products, services, and price. Insight, whatever it takes. And in part by Ford, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. And by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? Boy, Boy, if we were yeah. all that enthusiastic about our job. Dude took a dive at the end of this thing. Went head first. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. 
He's resting comfortably in the infirmary now in the back of the stadium, <laughs> having pulled both groins and destroyed his lower back. Oh, he had to throw There's up. Nothing like up. watching a well-conditioned athlete. <laughs> there he is. He made it. He's okay. He's okay, ladies and gentlemen. Been excused. Yeah. Ewis made the catch for 15. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Flag, but no whistle. And Anderson stands and watches as that ball is finally recovered by yeah. Guzik at the 18. Anderson made no move well, to go after that loose ball. He was looking to his left to make a call, and the Illegal snap went right over his Offense, head. The penalty is declined. Pittsburgh's ball, first out. Matt Block snapped the ball when Anderson was looking the other way. He was looking off to his left. See him looking to his left, and there goes the ball. Almost hit him in the right hand. Now that he sees it and doesn't yeah. make yeah. any move. Well, I, he's I'm so confused. That. He's still not yeah. sure what happened. There's no excuse for any of it, but something Block heard something and then thought he had the freedom to snap the ball. Most gun snaps are not timed and they are not done on a cadence, but rather at the center's discretion, and there was just a mistake. Is this Palco in the game? Yes, it is. He'll get a lot of work handing the ball off. Three yep. freshmen, Pennsylvania Player of the Year oh. for a state championship team in Imperial, and Jawan Walker, another true freshman out of Erie, with just his fifth carry of the year. So Walt Harris getting the chance to empty his bench, get some of the future Panther stars, they hope, out there. Sports Center will follow. We'll have some post-game coverage. We're going to switch over to ESPN News. Another personal foul, I believe, against Oregon State. I believe they're going to call face mask. I didn't see the grab of the face mask. Yeah, I think it was on the run. Uh, uh, on the After this Walker. goal, first down. Jawan Walker when he was tackled. But this is a big win. Now, this was a very big game to Walt Harris. I'm sure it was to Erickson and his staff as well, but Walt said this is a big game. It's going to be a smash mouth game. And these guys came in here ready to play, did a great job of stoning the running game with the outstanding back, Stephen Jackson, who gained only 36 yards and 19 carries. It's not even on the radar of his normal performance. And there's the guy that bashed him the most legally. Nice tackles by Gerald Hayes, who's at least our MVP yep. up here. We think he is. Ten tackles, over 400 for his career. Yep. At, at least half of those tackles have been head-to-head -head with Jackson, who yep. has 33 yards on 19 carries. Before tonight, his worst game this season was 56 yards against UNLV. Well, he had 36 at one time. Did he lose three of those? <laughs> And averaged 138. Walker. Our Capital One Bowl Week coverage continues on ESPN with three games tomorrow, beginning with the College Game Day Bowl Special presented by Outback at noon Eastern. And then at one, we get cranking from Houston. Southern Miss, Oklahoma State from Reliant Stadium, the Houston Bowl, 4.30 Eastern from Shreveport. Eli Manning at Ole Miss. Nebraska trying to end on an up note in the Main State Independence Bowl. And then L. Roberson at number six, Kansas State, will close out the triple header against Arizona State in the 25th annual Pacific Life Holiday Bowl from Qualcomm Stadium. Under the four-minute mark, and Tim Murphy gets just his third carry of the year. You know, you, Dave, you talked about earlier all the people coming back for this Pittsburgh team, especially on offense, just losing three. And both their leading scorers coming back. And both their leading scorers were true freshmen. Larry Fitzgerald led the team in scoring. David Abdul, the place kicker, was second. And Fitzgerald, I talked to him at practice on Monday and said, are you serious about your quote? He said, I'm, I plan on playing all four years in Pittsburgh. He said, my parents wouldn't have it any other way. I said, you better watch what you say. The coaches may look for that in writing <laughs> because let me tell you, the, the scouts or the pro scouts are going to love this guy. And, and he certainly will continue to master his, his craft here with Pittsburgh, but he is a special, special talent. Sitting it out at the moment as Palco will keep and score. <laughs> wow. This is a great thrill. A lot of backup players are out on that field. A lot of kids getting to play who normally don't get to play much, if any. And Palco gets a chance to score a touchdown. 
his first touchdown in his college career. Got a little speed. Made a mistake. He thought he was going to hold that yeah. ball out and put it <laughs> over the goal line, and he got greeted at that very instant. And Seth Lacey almost cost him that touchdown. This is now the highest scoring bowl game ever for Pittsburgh. They had 37 1980 Gator Bowl against South Carolina. Another easy win, 37 9. It's now 38 13 in Phoenix. Don't go away, though. We're going to tell jokes so everybody will hang around. Don't say that. Oh, okay. This is a live look yeah. at uh, a, a setup. You're yep. watching Walt Harris being set up for the Gatorade bath. They, he thinks they all want to hug him because they love him so much. That's why they wanted to <laughs> hug him. They were holding him. He should know better than that, Bill. You're a coach. You guys no, you don't love you that it. much. You want everybody. You want the guys to love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and they got Paul Rhodes, Paul Rhodes instead. The defensive coordinator. Oh, they got Walt yeah. too. Plenty of Gatorade buckets to go around. Paul Rhodes has done a great job with this defense, oh. and he is highly respected. When it was thought that Auburn was going to steal him away last February, and pay him. Yep. <laughs> oh, Myrie. Myrie. Oh, I love you so much, Coach. Yeah. Oh, not a oh. Bad return. Oh. And all for Calvin Carlisle, leaping and hopping over tacklers all the way to the 40. Here we go. Worth the price of admission. Oh, no. No headlong dive this time. Well, let's listen again. Boy, oh boy. This was better to look at, actually. That's yeah. the way you're supposed to run a kickoff back, though. You're not kidding. You, you hit that wedge like you're shot out of a cannon. Well, Adam Ruffinflew is going to wrap things up at quarterback for Oregon State, sophomore from Fresno, California, playing his seventh game of the year. Dwight Wright on the carry, our Capital One players of the game. Go a lot of ways for Pittsburgh, but Gerald Hayes as important as anybody defensively in taking Stephen Jackson completely out of the game. 19 carries, 33 yards, easily his worst game of the year. Newsom, 10 catches, 165 yards, and a touchdown. Even if they call that touchdown correctly, he has 10 catches for a 115 yards. And let's not forget those big guys that kept yeah. the blockers off Gerald Hayes and the other linebackers, Guzik, Stevens, Krachunas, and Harriot, did a nice job of hitting those gaps. They made a lot of plays tonight, Mike. They, I mean, they got in the backfield and made some tackles. Absolutely. And also took up two blockers each at times so that the linebackers could uh, get a clean shot on the running back. A lot of times those guys are used more as beasts of burden to try and eat up those blocks so those linebackers could make the plays. But you're right, nice stunning and gap shooting today tonight to get into the backfield doing it again right oh. running over a couple of tackles at seven yards want to say welcome aboard to all the sailors and marines serving at the naval support activity in Gaeta Italy watching the inside bowl on AFM the American Forces Network happy holidays thrills me to death that those men and women yep. over there could watch us and maybe get just a little sense of home and know how much we appreciate it. Well they they certainly got uh, it was worthwhile for them early with those catches by You're Fitzgerald and then the the uh, personal foul. Oh okay. boy another personal yards. foul against Oregon State. Second down. And even though that the touchdown for Newsom should have been called back it was a credible athletic move so it certainly came out of the gates quickly. Bill Dennis Erickson seems early in his career to have made a decision to live with penalties like that. Yeah I think the uh, what he considers to be aggressive penalties are things that uh, are not discouraged at least not uh, vigorously not like a lot of other coaches do. Right knocks straight backwards. And let's send it down to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, two years ago, Pittsburgh played in the first ever football game here at Bank One Ballpark. That night against Iowa State in what was then called the Inside.com Ball. The roof was closed for most of the game, and more than 40,000 fans are in the relatively small building here. It got pretty steamy. The playing surface got very slick, so Walt Harris, the pit coach, all week long with anyone he could find in a gold jacket, 
Those for the Fiesta and Insight Bowl committees, making sure the roof would be open tonight. It was closed just prior to kickoff, but then after the opening festivities and the fireworks, it was open. Went down from about 65 degrees inside to about the mid 40s, but it's been comfortable and the footing. I'm sure Coach Harris is very happy about that. It's been very solid all night long. I don't think anybody can have any kind of complaints about any of the conditions. This is, it's a really amazing how well they have made this baseball only facility and it was built transfer to football and I was living here when it was a baseball facility and the Arizona Diamondbacks played here and they had the pool out there it was uh, amazing what they've done here and then turn it into this great football field so oh. the Panthers get their second straight bowl win first win in the state of Arizona since the 79 Fiesta first nine win season since Marino was a senior and they'll finish ranked for the first time since 1989. And let's look at the fundamental performance by Pitt tonight. Very few penalties, no turnovers, nice tackling. Even here at the end when they put the backups in, those kids are up there stepping up, making form tackles. That's the way they're coached. Good football coaching job by the staff at Pittsburgh. You've got to be impressed. Oh, boy. Oh, they're going to get all the coaches. All these guys, that's a GA. Deserve, they all deserve to get the bat. They're very disappointed with their loss against West Virginia and Miami in their last two games. Could have very easily won both those games. And then to come out here and play so fundamentally sound. And another thing I didn't say, a great job in the kicking game. Yep. Torrey Cox was fantastic. Torrey Cox uh, put on tonight. a clinic about how you cover kicks. First meeting ever between Pittsburgh and Oregon State will go to the Panthers and they will finish ranked and nine and four Oregon State finishing eight and five the Panthers are the 2002 Insight Bowl champions as they break open a 10 10 game at the half with a 14 3 third quarter and what it going away coming up next Sports Center we'll have post game interviews and comments on ESPN news. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For some recent stats of this game, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college bowl games on the Internet. For Mike Golick, Bill Curry, Dave Ryan, our entire ESPN crew, Dave Barnett, so long from Phoenix. Sports Center is next with Carl Ravitch and John Anderson. Good night from the Bob. Park, first quarter, Rod Rutherford. To the true freshman Larry Fitzgerald, and look at this catch. Mm. Laying out into the end zone for the touchdown. Panthers up 7 0. Later in the first, Oregon State answers. All right, we saw Larry Fitzgerald do something athletic. How about James Newson? Spins away from the double team. Wait a minute. Somehow his knee did not He's hit down. the field. Well, upon further review, Keith Russell would be correct. Okay. If Keith Russell was an official, <laughs> he would have whistled them down because why? Because the elbow was down. Okay. That means he should I have been down. the knee was down. No, the knee was not down. Okay. But the elbow was down, so he should have been down. Anyhow, it was tied at seven. Now, there was some scariness here. Pittsburgh makes a field goal, but the fan catches the football and then falls into the dugout. Of course, they're playing at a baseball stadium, and the fan would have to be carted off by a stretcher. He had injuries to his head and his shoulder. Third quarter, Sean Robinson. With his team up 17 to 10. Escapes a couple of tackles and then breaks it down the sideline. 66 yards for the touchdown. That broke it open. Pittsburgh up 24 to 10 at that point in time. They win it 38 to 13 as Walt Harris gets the water bath out there. It's the most points ever for Pittsburgh in a bowl game. Previous high 34 points, most recently done last year in the Tangerine Bowl. Pitt wins consecutive bowl games for the first time since the 80-81 seasons. Panthers with their first nine-win season since 1982, and they will finish in the top 25 for the first time since 1989. Boston College and Toledo in the Motor City Bowl at Ford Field in Detroit. Yeah, news. Pittsburgh has beaten Oregon State in the Inside Bowl. So joining us live from Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, the men who called the game, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick. And fellows, this was a game billed as uh, what was supposed to be a defensive matchup. Two of the top defensive teams in the nation. Uh, as it turned out, uh, one, game, one team played better defense than the other, and Pittsburgh ends up with a school record for points in a bowl game. Yeah, there were 10 and 11 in the country in total defense, but uh, when you 
really slice this game up bit by bit. When you add all those pieces up, what you saw was mistake-free football by Pittsburgh. They didn't turn the ball over. They didn't let Steven Jackson grind out possessions for Oregon State. They made enough big plays on offense, obviously with 38 points, more than they've ever scored in a bowl game, that uh, they broke open this tight game at the half. They just never gave Oregon State any openings to exploit tonight. You just really have to take your head off to Walt Harris and his coaching staff. Almost never in a bowl game, after a team hasn't played for like a month, Will you see this kind of execution? Football is a game of discipline and courage. Offense, defense, special teams all play together. No mistakes on offense. Very few penalties. A great, a great job by the special teams, and a really a team victory. Hey, they, they took Stephen Jackson, that one of the, the, the what top fifth best running back in the country, and they shut him down. They flat out shut him down. They turned it into a passing game for Oregon State. Couldn't do it. They get the victory. Ex excellent execution. Stephen Jackson averaged 138 yards. He got 33 tonight on 19 carries. One of a number of things Walt Harris had to be happy about as he talked after the game with Dave Ryan. Dave, thanks so much, Walt Harris. Congratulations on the inside win tonight over Oregon State. Stephen Jackson only 33 yards rushing for someone who had had five straight games with 100 plus yards rushing. How do you shut him down so effectively tonight? We played outstanding defense all season. Uh, our players uh, really uh, play well with the staff that we have. Paul Rhodes done an outstanding job. All our defensive coaches, Bob Junko, Curtis Bray, David Blackwell done an outstanding job. It was a great team effort. Boy, Bob Ligashevsky, uh, we got a punt return. Sean Robinson, and Bob's our special teams coordinator. Sean Robinson got a punt return. It was big time in the, in the game here. Made the difference. Offensively, I thought we did a good job. Our Rod did a nice job. Larry Fitzgerald, Larry Fitzgerald. Gerald and Brandon Myrie uh, really had a good game. And if he had a good game, that means our line had a real good game. That's what you just put the next question. That's what I was going to ask you about Myrie scoring late in the game. And you congratulated the offensive line first. How big a game, how crucial was the O-line tonight? We, we've been growing that area all year. We lost, you know, we'll lose two seniors. It's going to be difficult to replay Chad Reed and Brian Anderson. But um, they stepped up here down the stretch of our season and really made the difference. So you had the four losses by just the 24 points. He had some very difficult losses to Miami and the other teams. Does this sweeten it a little bit at the end of the season? Yeah, this is a great accomplishment for our football team. You know, we won nine games for the first time since 1982. This group of seniors have won more games than uh, since the 90, uh, 1982 team. And uh, we're, we're going out uh, with our seniors on a winning note, and we couldn't be more proud of that. Congratulations, Walt. Thank, thanks, Dave. Dave? All right, Pittsburgh. Having the Insight Bowl trophy to take back East with them, a 38-13 win to celebrate. Larry Fitzgerald set the tone. There would be just enough spectacular plays to counter any and everything that Oregon State tried to do with this 40-yard touchdown on the first possession for Pittsburgh. Takes off at the five and lands at the goal line. Well, get ready, Sports Center. They'll be showing that over and over again. He ends up. You know, not, that was the, obviously the big play. Other plays catching shorter passes. They didn't really throw the long, a lot of long routes to him like that first one there, but he certainly did enough damage, and then the running game took over just like we had seen in the past, especially against Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh's win there. Five catches, 88 yards, and that touchdown in Pittsburgh's 38-13 win. J.W., back to you. Got a couple of email questions for you there, fellas, and, of course, fans always looking forward to, to next year. T.J. and... Harrisonburg wants to know, do you think Pittsburgh has a good enough team to be in the top 10 next year? What do you guys think? Who do they lose? Who's coming back? Well, they lose two really good offensive linemen. Right. and, and uh, Lamar Slade as well, one of the wide receivers. They, they lose Slade, but I think that this is an up-and-coming program, and I think they do have the potential to be a top 10 team as much as anything because of Rutherford, I think he'll make another quantum leap forward. And because of the fundamentals that they teach at Pittsburgh, the way they play the kicking game, they play like a top 10 team. Nine offensive starters returning. And uh, you know they'll lose some defensive talent, right. Cox, among them. But I think this is going to be an offense-dominated team that they bring in. And the four losses, as we talked about, the four losses only by 24 points. The average is six points per loss. Most of the players coming back, including the stars. So I, I would say that's certainly a possibility for them. And almost had a chance to uh, up at Miami's perfect regular season. And uh, this other email comes to you from Jake in California. He wants to know, what is Dennis Erickson's situation at Oregon State? Are any schools looking to steal him? 
<laughs> I think there are probably a lot of schools that love to have Dennis, but he's real happy where he is. Just talking to him when we did our conference calls and talking to him on the field before the game, I think he's delighted to be right there at Oregon State. I, I don't see him moving on. Both these coaches have done a great job turning their programs around. Yeah. Dennis Erickson at Oregon State and Walt Harris uh, when he came to Pitt in 1997. They're, they're both guys that are going to be hot commodities. They're going to be talked about in job openings, but they're two guys that are very happy where they are right now. I asked Dennis, do you miss the NFL? He said, not for an instant, <laughs> not for an instant. I would not go back to that life. He really loves college coaching. Good enough. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick, thanks very much for the help here on the ESPN News Post Game Extra. Happy holidays to you, fellas. All, All right, right, happy holidays to you. UW. The 38 points scored by the Panthers is the most in a bowl game in school history. The previous high, 37 in the 1980 Gator Bowl, a 37-9 victory over South Carolina. The 25-point margin of victory, by the way, the third largest in a, bowl, in a bowl game by the Panthers. 